Hello and you're very welcome to FBD Semple Stadium for a double header we have in store for you today. It's Derry against Kilkenny in the first game and Westmead against Mead in the second semi-final. So by the end of the day we will know who will be playing in Crow Park on the 6th of August in the All-Ireland Intermediate semi-finals. A feast of camogie over the next couple of hours. Both teams are out here in front of it at the moment, Derry and Kilkenny going through their warm-ups. And before we go any further, we'll have a look at the two teams. The Derry team is as selected and was what was in the programme and on social media during the week. Number one there is Neve Gribbon in gold. The full back line is number two, Neve Quinn, three, Leah Lennon, and four, Sinead McGill. Half back line is number five, Rachel Downey, six, Ethan Ecostig, the joint captain, and number seven, Lauren McKenna. The midfield is made up of number eight, Dervla O'Kane, and number nine, Anya McGill. And they're inside or into their forward line then. We've got number 10, Mairead McNicholas, 11, or McNichol even, I should say, 11, Anya McAllister, the other joint captain, and number 12, Emer McGuigan. And then the inside line, number 13, Aoife Shaw, 14, Amy Lennon, and 15, Mary Hegarty. That's the Derry team as we have it. We're not expecting any late changes or anything like that. The management have told us that is how they will play. Moving on to Kilkenny, and there is one change from the selected team. We'll get to that in a couple of minutes' time. They're playing their traditional black and amber. They're down here to their r- our right at the moment. In goals, they have number one, Cleena Murphy. Full back line, number two, Neve Leahy. Three, Jenny O'D. And number four, Jane Cass. Their half back line is five, Neve Feeling. Six, Roisin Feeling. Number seven, Hannah Scott, the team captain. Their midfield looks like Laura Green. And number nine, Aoife Cantwell. And into the forwards, then you have Daniel Quigley at 10, 11, Sarah Barco, and 12, Emma Minogue. And the inside line is where that one change is. So Trey's Donnelly is at 13. Number 18, Maraid Kennedy, replaces her sister, actually. Number 14, Carly, Caroline Kennedy. So Maraid is in there in place of Caroline. We expect there may be a few positional changes. Maybe Aoife Cantwell will come in a little bit. Maraid might go out to the midfield. We'll see that as the game is commencing. And number 15 there, the last player there, Grace Afton. We've just heard there from the public address system that there'll be maybe three minutes before the ball is thrown in here, which is the time that we're scheduled to go at is two is one o'clock. So please God, we will stick to that as it has a kind of a knock-on effect for the second game. But just looking at Derry for a second, there, their manager PJ O'Mullen, a man who'd be fairly well known in GA circles. Of course, he was the manager of Loch Eel when they went all the way to the All Ireland title back in 2012. And he's a former Antrim manager as well, so bringing loads and loads of experience to the role here with Derry. In the league this year, they finished third in Division 2A, behind Mead and Kerry, with three wins and two losses. It meant they didn't get out into the knockout stages of that. But in the championship, they really have turned things around. They topped Group 2 with three wins out of three, beating Wexford, Carlo and Antrim. Now, speaking during the week, PJ said it's great and all to have got this 100% record, and they go in probably as slight favourites on paper as a result, but he is saying... Kilkenny are a huge step up. They've played teams that are much at a much higher level than what Derry have played against. And it has been quite a while since Derry played a game as they went straight into today's semi-final from top in the group, whereas Kilkenny had to play in the quarter-finals. Last year in the championship, then, of course, they were beaten in the semi-final. We're going to pause now, I think, for... Or Ron Naveen. No, in fact, that's not Ron Naveen I'm hearing that. It sounds like the final countdown, actually. So we'll get to the Ron Naveen in a couple of minutes. We'll keep going with a couple of little facts on Derry. Last year in the championship, as I said, they were beaten by Cork in the semi final by one point. So I felt they were really close, there, thereabouts. And if they can just push on another small bit, they can maybe get to that Holy Grail of get to Croke Park. They have that one intermediate title from 2012. They beat Galway that day by a point, 210 to 29. Seven of the team to start today would have played last year in the semi-final. Six started and one as a sub. So that's the kind of the big stats on Derry. Moving on to Kilkenny, we've seen plenty on the Camogie YouTube channel, of course. They made the 2A final. They went That one went to a replay. Seamus Kelly, their manager, Mount Leinster Rangers, man. First year in charge, former minor manager, and was the intermediate coach back in 2015. He guided DCU to the Ashbourne Cup, of course, in 2022. In the league, they reached the 2B final and were beaten by Cork after a replay. We had that live for you here, two great games. In the championship then, things have gone pretty well for Kilkenny as well in general. They were unlucky as supposed to be called out into that quarter final. They ended up having to play that quarter final last week, but they came through on that as well. They beat Wexford 11 points to 9, so a two point win there for them. And that is why they're here in front of us in this All Ireland semi final. Last year, they didn't make the knockout stage of the league or championship, so already it's been a hugely progressive year for the Black and Amber. All Ireland titles, of course, for them. They have won from 2016, was posted their most recent one, and they have Division 2 title. Last one they have in that was back in 20, or 2006. 
they lost the intermediate final back in 2021 to Antrim and there's a number of players from that team still involved here today both teams are in their final huddle we've hit the 1 o'clock mark so we're running slightly behind but once the ball is thrown in and the game is on we won't feel time anymore after that kind of muggy close day here I suppose is how the locals definitely describe it so it will be warm we were expecting rain it was meant to rain all day long we haven't seen any of that just yet so please God that'll stay away till at least half five or so this evening but the conditions so are fairly idyllic from a camogie point of view maybe slightly on the warm side but again we will take that players us again finishing up that huddle and out we go there's no late surprise I don't think both teams Kilkenny anyway we can probably see the easiest and the number 18 Mairead Kennedy is the jersey that stands out there that doesn't include the 115 and we've mentioned it many times anytime we cover Kilkenny really on this stream we mention how that little block over the number there is just such a great initiative and brilliant to see from a supporter commentator media every point of view just makes the numbers just pop off the jersey and much much easier to see you might notice when you watch the men's final tomorrow you'll see certain of those digits very hard to make out especially if you're a distance back or up in the stand but the Camogie players have got it right and it's a real advantage Derry now coming out into their positions as well so it looks like Kilkenny will play from our right to left in this one in FBD Semple Stadium match referee for today's game is Gavin Donegan from Dublin and he is there looking for the signal he wants to get things up and going fairly live and he just lets the ball in and away we go we're off and Kilkenny come on to the attack in the early stage and it's Green now who's on the ball Green has opened up for there was a tackle coming in Green won the foul for herself but keeps going has she managed to release the shot gets the opening score there really good work there for Laura Green didn't need to be asked twice got on the ball there definitely a tackle came in over the top she was fouled the referee did give the advantage she took that advantage took another couple of steps and knocked it over the bar so Laura Green opens things up here for her side and Kilkenny go one point to the good that's dropping well taken in the air there by Derry and now they're on the way that looks like it was McNichol McNichol plays that down into the corner and now Derry have a chance the ball just maybe let be there a couple of players it looks like it's Eva Shaw who has it now Eva has it holds off a couple of players she was fouled up inside the 14 she was bearing down on goals no real option there for the Kilkenny defence because Eva Shaw is a goal machine got a goal in last year's semi-final was hoping to get things open up there very early and she's now won a free and she's going to take it herself it looks like so Aoife Shaw just there outside the 21 the Lavi player standing over this one an easy enough one you'd imagine to start just outside the 21 the angle isn't too difficult and it'll be a nice one to just get her warmed up to get her up and going and she hits that one yeah, as cool as you like over the crossbar and Aoife makes it all square again one point apiece so Laura Green with the point for Kilkenny Aoife Shaw there with the leveller for Derry as she knocks that over so it's going to be Murphy now in the Kilkenny goes they're going to get things started again she's like to switch her hurdy there she's moved things up along she comes out she's going to go to her right and she's dropping that over the halfway line over the 265 it's dropping it's pulled in the air but Derry just seemed to have enough numbers over there and I think it's Nikastig plays that down the line takes a bit of a deflection off the Derry player it's going to go out and it's going to be a Kilkenny line ball and it's going to be Roisin Phelan is going to take this one herself as she gathers that one Coming up on two minutes gone in this one, a point apiece here in this first All Ireland Intermediate semi final. Of course, Mead play West Mead after this one. So here goes Roisin Phelan, captain back in 2021 when Kilkenny were in the intermediate final, as we mentioned earlier. And Derry have really done well to cut that one out in the play. There's plenty of space here, wide open space of FBD Semple Stadium. And straight away it's picked up there by McNichol again. She's been prominent. The referees is a foul. Oh, he's saying it was a throw. I think he pointed the wrong way with his hand there initially, but he was saying that was a throw. Which usually when referees give a call like that, it's really an indication of how he's going to referee the rest of the game. He knows he has to make that call good and early, make the players be aware. This is what I'm going to be watching out for on that occasion. It was Murray McNichol who was caught out there for the throw. And it's going to be Hannah Scott, the Kilkenny captain, to take this one. Throws it up for herself on the left-hand side. Puts a dangerous ball in around the house. It's dropping around the 14. Oh, straight on to that. Kilkenny just have the numbers there. They've managed to pick that one up. Turn the strike is going to come in. It looks like a decent effort. And Kilkenny looked like they've got another score. That one looked like it was Sarah Barco. Sarah Barco came out, won that. Made herself a bit of space and knocked it over. 
She's just given too much room there and managed to find her range and put that between the posts. Derry take this one long. It's dropped there. Again, it looks like Kilkenny are going to win this though. And they come right on the attack again, using their legs, using their running again. That one is hand passed forward into a bit of space. It looks like it was read there by O'Kane. O'Kane blocked that out. She was half blocked though with her clearance. And it's still there, still on the ground. Six or seven players around that and it's eventually cleared out the field. Looks like McGuigan who came onto that who's playing a little bit deep. She plays out brilliant control there. Was it on purpose? It doesn't matter. As McNichol gets on that, she looks up. She had a bit of space. And that is an outstanding score. Great bit of skill, great bit of control. She looked up and then she was able to split this post. Was Murray McNichol? Good score from her. So, two points apiece coming up on four minutes. Both teams have made a decent start. I'll be happy how things have gone so far. Really 50 50 game. So far, that one's dropped down again. Derry just have the numbers there back. That was a cool one down the line up to McNichol again, who's been everywhere in the opening stages for Derry. She plays that down. But there isn't any player there in a red and white jersey. It's easy picked up by the black and amber players. As that one is put back down to where it came from. It's going to drop down. It's picked up. Now Kilkenny have a chance to get moving. That one is Quigley. Quigley plays that in. It's not an accurate one. And Derry again just standing back there. It looks like Nicastic just playing that one up. But right back down to the other number six. Roisin feeling. Roisin plays that down into the D. There is space in here. Kilkenny looks to exploit this one again. Is there going to be some look like Barco again? Barco gets on the second attempt. Two players converging on top of her. Barco still has it. She's heading towards the sideline. Still Barco. She looks out to Saw Quigley was outside her. A Terry player also saw Quigley was there unmarked. I think it was McNichol again who did really well to stop that attack by Kilkenny. And they've worked down the line. Good, intricate hurling down as far as McNichol. But Hannah Scott, Hannah Scott comes out showing leadership there from the captain. Comes out and launches it way down the field. Again, the Derry fullback looks like she was underneath that one, Lennon. But she's dispossessed. And there is a chance Kilkenny bearing down a goal inside the D. There is an advantage coming. We're going to go back for any advantage. It looked like Donnelly was coming through, coming through the edge of the D. She was pulled back. It's going to be a free in and a relatively scorable one too. Just things seem to open up there right down the middle and give a chance for Barco to go through. But she was fouled at the end and it's going to be a free in. Oh, it didn't really go so well the first time there for Grace Afton. Afton goes at it again. She won't be happy with how that one went, but the ball is still there. It was fought for. Derry threw their bodies into that, and now I think they've won a free out. Maybe just a little bit nerves there. From Afton Grace, I should say, was on that one. And just didn't get underneath that didn't get the purchase she would have liked and you'd imagine she has that over her system now does Afton Grace and she will put that behind her and kick on for the rest of the game but it is going to be a free out now to Derry coming up on six minutes gone in this one that one is cleared down the field there by Neve Gribben Gribben gets a huge amount of purchase on that one it's dropped down and it looks like Kilkenny have that it's pulled away and they managed to just get that out it's rushing field I think we got the pull on that she plays it up the line Kilkenny have a couple of numbers going forward left and right in there as far as M. Minogue M. Minogue takes the ball on the stick rides a couple of tackles high tackles in the referees to play on you have the advantage they didn't get any advantage out of that and within as far as Afton Grace she was coming out with the ball in her hand she was I suppose she knew she was playing with a bit of borrowed time there. She knew Emma Minogue had been fouled, so she knew she could take a bit of a chance. And now she has the chance to make, we make amends for the last three, which didn't go her way. This one is slightly farther out. Again, you'd imagine a player of her ability will convert from here. She got two, both from freeze in the quarter final. And she's just inside that's the 45 line you see there in front of her. She makes a better connection with this one. But just as I say that, oh, it's going to drop there. Might be Zander. Shot coming in. Barco. Oh, it was low. It just didn't have the power. Derry had enough numbers back there on the line, blocking things up. And it's cleared out. And it's Downey now. Rachel Downey plays that down along the line. As far as McNichol, who has a point from earlier in this game. She hand passes it inside to McGuigan. McGuigan looks up. There is a couple of players to aim for. She's knocked in there. One hand batted back down. Slightly dangerous. But Kilkenny have enough numbers to pick up the scraps. And they come away with it again. True feeling again, it looks like. Feeling plays it up to Kennedy Maria Kennedy loses her fitting, footing at a vital moment and now Derry come again they're looking at the post here looking up there is McGuigan McGuigan looking for an opening score today but that just goes to the left and wide couple of chances there for both teams but the scoreboard remains unchanged the scoreboard remains two points apiece but we saw maybe half a goal chance at one end there for Sarah Barco for Kilkenny and then McGuigan had a chance there for Derry for a point but neither of them managed to convert and it's back as far as Murphy now to get things going again 
That one is dropping. Looks like a couple of players thought they had it, but it went through all of them and it's gone all the way through to Laura Green. Laura Green now has it. She has a point from the very opening minutes of this game. Now she has it, comes inside, makes things a little bit easier. Brilliant hook come in there. That came in from Darville O'Kane. She did well. Got to stick in and made sure there wasn't a proper connection there for the Kilkenny player to get the shot off. And now Derry, can they score something from this? McGuigan, who had a shot a couple of minutes ago. She plays it inside, but Hannah Scott read that really well. She was back there, stopped any danger of crew and plays it outside there as far as Cantwell. Then Cantwell gives it up. Cantwell's looking for the return. She's not going to get it though, because Derry look like they've managed to win this bit of a tackle. They have, they managed to win that big high tackles coming in there with the referee says all's love and fair in the all Ireland semi-final at this stage. Now that's pulled away, trying to just getting a little bit scrappy at the moment. Neither team gets position until the Derry player gets onto it. She comes out of her own defence. A little stick pass forward there by Nikasig. She plays that forward, but again, just Kilkenny players not giving up at an easy, and it's gone to ground again. It looks like Roisin Field comes out with that again. Gives it over as far as Quigley. Quigley runs into a bit of space. She's heading towards the sideline, just trying to get a bit of room to let her shot go. She was being held, though. The referee said, oh, the referee actually gives it the other way. Says she took too many steps. Really good work there from Raiden McNichol from a Derry point of view. Didn't lay quickly out easy and now it's going to be a free in and this one is just outside the 45 so you imagine it's one that can be taken on by Aoife Shaw and potentially converted or have we a change of free taker potentially <laughs> Hannah Scott telling her to go back that's where the free and in fairness though, we don't often see that she listened to her the linesman was also there though making sure that this is taken from the right spot and here's going going directly for the post not an easy angle, it looks like McAllister McAllister, they change our free taker we get the same result, McAllister from a good we'll say it could be 50 metres out out by the sideline, she made that look very easy as she struck it over the crossbar and our side now lead, 3 points to 2 short enough one as far as Hannah Scott, Hannah Scott though she anticipated it, she knew it was coming, turns up inside and Kilkenny, maybe this is one they've worked off on the training ground, really good work again there from Derry up with the stick, managed to back that out make sure nothing goes in behind her there, really good defending there from Sinead McGill she has conceded a line ball though. It's going to be taken out by Afton Grace. She's here. Is she going to? She's been told. No, this is where it went out. Afton, this is where you're going to take it from. Hannah Scott comes short. Oh, but that one is taken too quickly. And just Hannah Scott came looking for the short one, but the ball never came back into play. I don't think. But or it came in and went straight back out again. I think is actually the decision. So now Derry have a line ball. They'll be happy with how that little exchange worked out. Good ball across into a bit of space. Nicely picked up there by Nikasic. She plays that far, and Derry still holding on to this one. They have a couple of numbers running left and right, holding on to this one. They're trying to play this into their dangerous inside line. That ball bounces nicely, but just wouldn't chop into the hands there from a Derry perspective. Amy Lennon was out there, just wouldn't hop into her hand for her, and goes out for a line ball. So it's going to be Hannah Scott who's been all over the play in the last couple of minutes. So here comes Hannah now. You can see there the flag starting to come up a small bit. The wind has kind of kicked into gear a small bit since this game started. And it is favouring Derry in this opening 30 minutes. Nice bit of height on that one. But again, it's going straight out of play. We've seen that happen twice now from a Kilkenny perspective. It was Afton Grace earlier. Just there was Hannah Scott. Both times the ball going out. And Derry now have the advantage again. And it's Sinead McGill. She came on. She came on as a sub in last year's semi-final so has been around this team for a few years she goes fairly short with that one I don't know if it's on purpose or deliberate but it's been turned over again now Emma Noak has it Emma plays that in she's half blocked the ball doesn't go as far as she would have liked and Derry pick it up back there Nikasik has it again the joint captain nice little stick pass up as far as Downey Rachel Downey hand passes that on again and it's clear and there's acres of space to play with on the far side of the field if Amy Lennon can get onto it Amy has it now spins her player now Amy she has two Kilkenny players against her she's lost the ball but she recovers has she managed to get it back in her hand not yet but she's still fighting for it she's still going for it it's still on the ground not being one at the moment it's still over there but the ball just wouldn't come up and Kel Kenny do really well there and managed to turn that over and get it out the field there Eva Cantwell drives it up the field another little bit and now it's one on one inside and it's Barco inside Barco around the 21 has she managed to get it still on the ground Barco still fighting for it now she has it now she has it in her hand she's looking around for some support there's two or three players waiting for it plays it outside as far as Kennedy Kennedy looks up yet to score in today's game can she write that wrong right now no she can't that one has dropped and Derry come away with this one again they'll be breathing a sigh of relief there because it did look odds on to Kilkenny were going to get a score there but that did not happen and now Derry have a chance to get their own score a few steps been taken there the referee says play on it looked like it was Downey there who had the ball but oh good dispossession there by Minogue Minogue who's thrown herself into everything as well in this game in the early stages O'Kane okay, plays that one down inside and snatched that there from a Kilkenny perspective and cleared out by O'D O'D puts that one high 
down into the danger zone again inside that attack in 45 from a Kilkenny perspective but there they have the numbers there they have the ball they have the skill and they're coming out good hand pass over the top getting the return on that maybe the return wasn't necessary there Neve Quinn had done well to get the ball now it's back as far as McAllister McAllister plays that across the field as far as McGuigan McGuigan good ball into the corner now can they get something on this it's in there as far as is it Hegarty he has the ball now Hegarty shoots from a difficult angle she's heading towards the sideline does she manage to get enough of a connection on that she doesn't it was always going to be difficult she was on the back foot striking that heading away from the goals and it goes to the right and wide so still just one point in this one three points to two in favour of Derry Murphy now looking around Again, there's four players underneath that one trying to catch it, but it's going to be a dirty hand who gets it. It's Downey. Downey then goes to the ground. Emma Minogue was in on top of her. Emma's trying to dig this one out for herself. A real Tommy Walsh style player is Emma Minogue. She can play in the backs. She can play in the forward, and she works really hard in every game you see her in. What does the referee decide? decide? I'm just going to throw this one in. The referee just looks at that one and said, the ball wasn't coming out too easy. I gave you a couple of seconds. You didn't work it out yourself. So I'm going to throw in the ball. It's still a little bit messy, but it's coming up to Quigley now. Quigley has that. She plays it over the top. But again, Derry just have the extra player back there making things very easy. And that's just played up the line. Up there as far as McAllister. Again, McAllister scored over from a free a couple of minutes ago. Good use of the stick there. And she plays it in. They're trying to play it into a bit of space there. There is space to be exploited. If you can get something onto that one over there in the far side of the field. Working hard, being pushed out again. Can the shot be released from out from a difficult enough angle? That would be one of the scores of the day if that goes over. But it doesn't. It just goes to the right and wide we've seen two there from difficult enough angles maybe the next time she'll think about playing that one in there was maybe maybe nothing obvious inside there was two Derry players inside now they were being marked but that shot goes out to the right and wide there and that's two in a row for Hegarty from what we can see from up here and that one is dropping down again over there to O'Kane O'Kane is on to that one She's a stick comes in there and she loses it but Derry have enough numbers back there to make sure they hold on to possession that one is knocked 13, 14 metres forward it's dribbling along the ground it's still yet to be won a kick there by Feeling kicks it but she kicks it straight into a Derry player's arms and she's coming out with that now, we've seen plenty of little stick passes off the hurley one-handed brick flick style from the great Waterford man who invented that move now it's well caught now Derry have a chance that was well taken in the air it looked like Eva Shaw Eva Shaw did she get it she just in and that's three wides in a row now from the inside line of Derry in the last couple of minutes and they'll be hoping they don't look back on this one she was under a serious amount of pressure Hannah Scott was in on top of her and a couple of other players on top of her but it just didn't work out for her so Aoife Shaw remains at just one point that one coming from a free now it's going to drop to Laura Green Laura Green will see her do this a couple of times already in this game she's looking for some support she gets it from Emma Noak Emma comes in on the left Emma was off her feet as she struck that one but it doesn't affect her as she turns on her left and strikes that one between the posts and over the crossbar the James Stevens player of course, we've seen plenty of her with her club winning the All Ireland or getting to the All Ireland Intermediate Club there. She was player of the match in the semi final. That one was played down in UL in the freezing cold depths of winter. You might remember that back in February. We had that live here on the Camogie YouTube channel as well. She had a great day that day and she's playing really well today as well. All square here in this semi final as you just pass the halfway mark in this first half. That's going across the field. Again, Kilkenny looked to be the favourite to pick up this one. Is it going to be taken on the turn? Derry defending really well over there. The ball just won't come up off the surface here in FBD Semple Stadium. It's still there. And it looks like Kilkenny have a bit of momentum on this one. That one looked like Trace Donnelly was coming out with that one. Does Trace have it? She doesn't. The Again, all the players don't want that and getting easy. So it does, I suppose, result in a few of these rocks happening because you're, if you're not able to get your hurley on it, you're throwing your body into it, you're throwing your boot into it, you're throwing anything just to stop any forward momentum from your opposition. And it's going to be another throw in, I think, over there. Laura Green is in that one and it's dropped. Hasn't come out too easy for either team. Again, they say, well, Derry, there we go, coming out of that one, coming out of the rock, and they've won their side a free. I think that. Referee indicating there, Gavin Donegan indicating there was a high tackle, so it is going to be a free, a free to Derry. Now it's a long way out. You imagine this one will be dropped in around the house, or maybe something will be worked short from it as it's back inside their own half. A bit of movement down on the Derry bench here in front of us. Still very early days, but three subs there warming up will we see any of them in the second half but we will go with the play at the moment that one is dropping in around the edge of the square it's dangerous it's bouncing there Derry are first to react can they get something out of this Kilkenny now have enough bodies back there it's still there the ball is still loose it's still there to be won it looks like Kilkenny have it it looks like Lee he has it Neve Lee is trying to get out she's half blocked she's still there it's whipped away Kilkenny trying to double on this trying to get it out and now they have the numbers back there they have enough people and it's Kennedy it's Maria Kennedy who eventually ends up clearing that one not a very accurate one it comes straight to Derry and now they're going back now now they're going back down the tr- through McAllister McAllister takes a couple of steps there still on the ball she's half blocked goes back inside Derry still 
believe they can get a score out of this, but that's not what the Kenny player they're saying. They have it. Laura Green now. Laura Green plays it up on her right hand side into a bit of space. Can that be exploited by the Kilkenny attack? Not at the moment because there's really good defending going on up there. It looked like Trace Donnelly was out onto that. She was foul. It's going to be a free and right out by the sideline. Real helter skelter stuff there in the last couple of minutes. It looked odds on the Derry were going to get a score, but Kilkenny defended really well. It's gone all the way up to the other end of the field. And now it's a free for Afton Grace. They are two or three yards in from the sideline. Not an easy one for her. She's going into what bit of a breeze is there now. It has died down a lot in the last couple of minutes again. Freeze haven't been going her way just yet, but she'll be trying to eradicate that from her mind. We have a pause here as one of the Derry players here are between the 45 and the 65, getting a bit of attention. She's standing up now. They just needs to tie up the helmet so we can get going again. And there might be a chance that this will be dropped in around the house as opposed to directly converted. It'll be an interesting be interesting to see what Afton is thinking here. Afton Grace goes at this one again. That's the first one we've seen her make a really good connection with. She needed it on this occasion. Is it accurate? Has plenty of distance, but just the accuracy isn't 100%. It goes off to the left. But if you can get a bit of confidence from driving a free wide, that was one that will give it to her because she made a really good connection, lifted it properly. Her accuracy was just off. She didn't have either of those two things on the earlier one, so it should be nice to get things up and going from her. But she just needs to bring in that last attribute and put it between the posts. But there's plenty of time to go here. Three points apiece, 19 minutes gone. Picked up there by Jenny O'D. Jenny plays that outside as far as Roisin feeling. Roisin puts that one up again. She's looking for Emma Minogue. Emma Minogue has it eventually. It's dropping straight into her hound now. Emma's looking up. Intelligent pile up the line. And Kilkenny have a chance to work something from here. Quigley. Quigley has open country to run into. She's waiting around though. She wants a bit of support. She comes across the field. There's two Kilkenny players. There's three Derry players. You'd fancy the Derry players come away with this. And that's exactly what happened. It looks like it's Quinn now. who's coming out with this ball on the stick. Coming out down the line. She looks up and all she'd see is black and amber though. And she plays it straight down to throw it for D there she gives it inside back inside as far as Laura Green Laura Green who always seems to be in time and space she makes a decent connection with that one is it accurate it's plenty high it's plenty long and it's true and between the post and Laura Green gets number two for her for the day and Kilkenny go into the lead they had to wait for a while we had to wait for a while for the last score but it was worth waiting for Laura Green got that in a bit of space had the confidence to take it on take her shot and put it over the crossbar bat it down there and Derry come again just slightly Slow there with the release, but she gets the second chance on it. Here she comes now, McGuigan again. She plays it inside. It's going to drop there kindly to Lennon. Lennon how has it? Does she have it? She's lost it over there. And Kilkenny have a chance now to launch another attack over Afton Grace's head, though. There you have the players back there. They have the numbers back there trying to run this out. A couple of steps there taken, but the referee says she took a couple of steps because she was being pulled back. Sinead McGill been pulled back there so she wins her side of free and gives them a chance to steady themselves for a minute to work maybe something from here 10 minutes left in this one one point Kilkenny lead by in this FPD in FPD Semple Stadium across the field again there's a bit of space over there that can be maybe worked in if Hannah Scott wasn't there winning that one Hannah Scott managed to maybe back that down for herself with her hand now she has it again now she's looking up she's steadying herself planted her feet and gave a really good ball inside and Kilkenny look menacing at the moment as they work that up the field back inside to the point score from minutes ago Laura Green Laura goes one way then the other now Laura has open country again here goes Laura with the right she looks very calm it's off the post it's dropping Kilkenny just don't have enough inside players in there who were quick enough to react to that one and Derry have the chance to clear that and it's dropping again there's two Derry players coming on top of that and Derry would have got a fright from that one that hit the post really well held there kept it going there caught that didn't lose her footing and played that back down the field but again it's not an accurate one and Kilkenny are easier to pick up the scraps Derry just have to be more clinical with that final pass into that final third they're not finding their player just yet it's something they will work on in the second half you'd imagine as I say that that pass doesn't go to hand either and Kilkenny have it now they have three or four players there in plenty of space this one is opening up for Kennedy Kennedy doesn't make a connection. She there was dropping inside it could still be dangerous Barco has it but Derry defended really well their defence really has been exemplary in the opening 21 minutes or so of this game they just need to get their forward into it a little bit more they'll feel like Kenny holding on to possession here three players standing there within a very close vicinity as this one is played down here near the near sideline Derry again good strong work in there but it's going to work out there is it Afton Grace is going to get it she's lost her footing but the ball squirts out it's still there there might be a chance for Emma Minogue Afton Grace is still there as well is it going to come up? It's still the referee taking a long look at this one as the ball has managed to work its way out somehow. It managed to just squirt out there four or five players involved in it. It's gone down as far as McGuigan now. Even McGuigan plays it inside again. It's 2-1-2 two two inside there and Derry have the advantage as they have the ball in their hand as they're coming out with this one. Good work there 
by Shaw. Aoife Shaw plays it in. In as far as Hegarty. Hegarty, oh, she couldn't get it the first time. She gets it the second time. Now she has a chance. Again, the angle isn't that easy, but she makes it look absolutely fantastic with that score. The angle wasn't suiting her. She managed to shake her player off, get into a bit of room, and knock it over the bar. She's had two that didn't go her way earlier in the game. But now she can put that behind her as she gets her opening point of the day. Mary Hegarty with the score. So seven minutes or thereabouts left of normal time in this first half. And that one was expertly taken there by the Derry defence. Right behind that all day long was Rachel Downey. She plays that up the line. And it's going to drop. It's going to drop again to a Derry player. Now they can work from this. That was Aoife Shaw. Good vision from Shaw, but equally good vision from the Kilkenny defence. Didn't let that ball go to hand. And now it's Hannah Scott again to clear this. Hannah Scott, she just drives out whatever and she has down into the dangerous one. It might work out from her perspective as it's dropping in down to Barco. Barco, though, was outnumbered there. And Derry have the players, they have the numbers to come out with this one. Left and right, there was options there. As that one is played down as far as Downey. Rachel Downey now has it. She goes across the field. It's going to drop. And Derry look like they're going to get onto this one. Maybe it's possible hand on the back that the referees to play on Neve Lee. The Kilkenny defender does really well as it would comes out as far as feeling now. Roisin feeling doing well. There's plenty of players on her back trying to cause her bother, but it doesn't seem to bother at all as that is laid in. And again, Derry just have a little bit of time to pick this one up and play it down the line. Play that one down as far as Downey again. Rachel Downey who's been very prominent as well in this first twenty odd minutes or so. Good block coming in there. The referee says that has gone out over the line and it is going to be a line ball. Good tackle there by Quigley. So it's going to be a line ball to Kilkenny inside their attack in 45. And Minogue standing near that, but I think it's going to be Hannah Scott, the team captain, who's going to come up and take this one. She was full forward back in 2021 when they lost the intermediate final. Now she's back at number seven. She's really lording things back there in that half back line. In the opening half so far. So here goes Hannah. It is two points for a line ball, of course, in Camogie. I don't think Hannah's going to go for that just yet. I think she's a little bit too far out for that. But she does actually go for the goal. It's going to, is it going to be well kept in though? Can he have a chance now to work something from this? Couple of players calling for it across the field dangerously. Just too much on it. And Derry have a chance now to clear this one through McKenna. It looks like on the far side of the field. McKenna is going strong. She's coming out. She's up as far as the 265s. Kilkenny players come in on top of Murray Kennedy was in there. And it's been turned over. Turned over there by Aoife Cantwell. Cantwell then plays that down from where the ball started. And you'd imagine Derry just have enough players back there. One of them was okay. And okay in his last possession though. And Minogue has it. And Minogue has it. Couple of players all over. She lays it back outside as far as Kennedy again. It looks like Kennedy with the shot. Is that going to come in? It doesn't look like it. Unless at the last minute. No. It just goes to the right and wide. And it looks like Kilkenny are about to make a change here. Claire Doherty, Dohany even I should say, it looks like she's going to come onto the field. Dohany just coming onto the field there. We've seen plenty of her representing Kilkenny, but Dohany is in there. And, and it looks like Afton Grace is the one who's going to make way. She makes way and Claire Dohany is on. And we have about four minutes left of this first half. Derry come again now with this one. It's dropped in 265s again. And Derry are quick to pick that one up and come driving out. We've seen some good running from them. That one is knocked over the top. It just didn't work out from their perspective because Hannah Scott, the wall was back there. Put up the stick and stopped that going past her and released back down the field again. But Derry looked like they have enough numbers there and they have as they play this one up again. The crowd didn't seem to like that one too much. But Derry have managed to work this outside again. Good work there. It looks like it's Lennon now who's on the ball. Big tackle coming in there. Lennon was still trying to go forward. In fact, that looks like Derry number... They're in number 24, I think I might be seeing out there. We will see about that in another couple of minutes' time. If that is to be confirmed, number 24 is Rachel McAllister. Right between the 45 and the 65, a chance for Derry to just keep their scoreboard ticking over, keep that whole scoreboard ticking over. That one is hit high and accurately over the crossbar. Good score for Derry. It looked like that was Ma- it was McAllister. Oh, and McAllister with her second free of the day. That one was a fair distance out. It was pretty central, but she made it look easy as she struck that one over the bar. Good long puck out again there coming from Murphy. Dropping there around the 45, and Derry picked that one up pretty easily and tried to work something from this in there as far as Nikasic. Nikasic plays that on, and Derry come driving out there. And that is number 24, so we weren't told about this, but Rachel McAllister is on the field. And now, but now it's another chance for Lennon. Lennon coming down the field. 
So we'll try to look into that at half time if we can't look into it now. But it looks like number 24, Rachel McAllister, is on the field. Something we weren't made aware of and we didn't see happening since the ball was thrown in. But it, it looks like Rachel McAllister, 24, is on the field. The ball is Hannah Scott now. So Hannah Scott between the 45 and 65 gets on top of the ball there doesn't really get much of a connection on that and it's gone out and Kilkenny trying to work something from this just enough numbers back there and Derry managed to just tidy up the house play that across the field there as Nikasic Nikasic now she's looking up that one again bouncing nicely into the hand just doesn't stay there on this occasion but Derry managed to work good strong running there again now things are opening up bearing down and going up to the edge of the D there is a chance coming here you can just release it plays the rack outside now working it over and back back as far as Another Derry player is in a way better position. That one looks like to be McAllister. McAllister just took a step back, put up her hand, grabbed that ball, took on the responsibility and knocked it over. That's number three for her. She got two from freeze. That's her first from the day. On oh, McAllister, fine score. Murphy, Cleena Murphy of Kilkenny launching that one. Six points to four now. Derry lead. Their defence has been strong and their forwards are just taking advantage when they do get the ball. They have been maybe star of possession in the early stage but been very economical that ball has worked in now Kilkenny have got some big tackle coming in there the referee will have a decision to make and his decision is it is a free in and this will be a very score one and one you'd imagine Kilkenny will convert we've had a few different free takers so we'll be interested to see who will actually take this one after Grace did start on it but she has since left the field so there will be a free in for Kilkenny in the coming minutes once the Derry player who is down receives a bit of attention Good lively game as you just hit over the 29 minute mark so less than a minute of normal time left there probably will be two or three you'd imagine for the couple of stoppages we've had in that first half and probably just be a one point game if as you'd expect Kilkenny do convert from here of course both teams playing for that big day out in Croke Park on the 6th of August triple header in HQ junior premier junior Intermediate and senior all taking place that day up in Crow Park. And that's where every player out there wants to be. It looks like it's going to be Emma Minogue who's going to take the free now. She's taken on the responsibility just there on the 21. Once the Derry player gets the attention to her, then she does. She's up and ready to go again. Hard to make her out from here, but she's back in position again. And it's going to be Emma now. Emma who has a point from play. Can she get her first from a free? Oh, she's told to go back. She's told to go back about half a foot, I think. The ref been very particular about measurements here today as well. He's, that is his job, I suppose, Gavin Donegan, telling Emma, no, you need to go back. So here goes Emma now on her right-hand side. You'd expect her to convert this one. And that's exactly what she does. Knocked over the bar, number two for Emma. And number five, two minutes, we've been told, two minutes to be added on. And we've played 30 seconds of the first one of those, so about 90 seconds or so left in this first half. And just one point in this one, Neve Gribben now. Neve over at 65 again. Half batted down there from a Kilkenny's perspective, but there's a hand in the back, and it's going to be a free in. And this just gives Kilkenny a chance, maybe, to try and level things up before the half time break. But Derry will be doing everything in their power not to let that happen. The breeze, we mentioned it halfway through that first half, which was aiding Derry, has died down again, so nothing really to be gained from it in the second half. It stays as it is. Knee feeling now with this one. Knee feeling puts that one down and it's dropping. Just falls into the hand, but then falls out equally quickly. And again, there's four or five players. There's more Kilkenny players around this, which is surprising, considering it's in their attacking. So now they come away with it. Look, it's Barco. Barco, difficult enough angle. Stick comes in there. It's well saved. It's still there, though. Barco playing with that on the ground. Kicked it across. Kicked it across dangerously. But again, Derry had enough numbers back there to eradicate any danger happening from that one. And now they have a chance. Now they have a chance to go with this one themselves through McGuigan. McGuigan is way back to field, despite what number she's wearing. She's wearing number 12. She gave the hand pass on, and now Derry might have a chance to try and get a score. They played it over there to the far side of the field. It looks like they're trying to play it into Hegarty again. Hegarty's out by the sideline, but she's doing well. She's working really hard. Takes a couple of touches over to that race. McAllister now was trying to get into that, but the ball won the race. Gone out. It's going to be a line ball on the far side of the field. And we'd imagine with only about 20 seconds of the allocated injury time left, that this will be the final play of the day. That one is taking, oh, there's venom on that one, but too much venom. And it goes all the way in and goes harmlessly wide in the end. And the Derry manager team, looking up here in front of us, weren't happy with that one. They had a chance to maybe get a score to extend their lead going into the halftime break. But that one wasn't used to its best effect. And now Cleena Murphy has this. You'd expect the referee is actually calling for the ball. Gavin Dunnigan said he saw enough in that first 32-odd minutes. Halftime score, Derry, who lead this one, six points. Kilkenny are on five 
And I suppose looking at that halftime score, it's a fair enough reflection of how things have gone. Kilkenny maybe have edged possession, but Derry have been very economical when they've got it up to their forwards. McAllister has three, number 11, Anya McAllister, the joint captain. Maria McNicholas at 10 there has one. Aoife Shaw has a point from a free and Mary Hegarty has a point as well. That makes up their six scores. Kilkenny, Dave M. Minogue has two. She's just been moved on to the freeze. She converted one there a couple of seconds ago. Barco at centre forward who's playing maybe closer into the goal, maybe in around the centre, full forward position. She has one and Laura Green has two. That makes up their five points. So it's Derry, six points. Kilkenny, five points. Half time here in this first intermediate Camogie semi-final. We're going to take a quick break and we're we'll back with full coverage of the second half. Very shortly.
Welcome back to FBD Semple Stadium Half time in this All-Ireland Intermediate Semi-Final Derry lead 6 points to 5 over Kilkenny We think there's going to be one change maybe to Derry in the next couple of minutes Looks like number 20 Emer Murphy was warming up there in the last couple of minutes so potentially she is going to come on next few minutes hasn't happened just yet and we can confirm that Rachel McAllister is on the field number 24 for Derry and it's Derry who are back in possession of the ball there on the attack there hand pass goes slightly astray but Derry managed to make the men's out of this it looks like it's going to be McAllister Anya oh, yeah. in this case going down and goal. Anya oh, up to the edge of the D Anya oh, just 3 or 4 again Kilkenny players come in and top her she loses the ball and Kilkenny have a chance to work their way out of this one again it looks like it's feeling feeling plays that over the top O'Kane goes up for that from a Derry perspective she has it now O'Kane comes back inside trying to get away with support she sticks that one and manages to just stop that from going out of play and manages to find another player in the red and white jersey which didn't look like it was going to happen there at one stage but now it's played back down the field and Kilkenny they're outnumbered but they have the ball which is the main thing you want at this stage and Sparko has it now back up to the 21 she releases there it doesn't get the connection to the light a couple of deflections come in there and it's just gone out of play and the umpire decided that one went wide not an easy decision as two players went for that one who did it hit last he decided it was a Derry player so it's going to be or a Kilkenny player I should say so it is going to be a wide ball and a puck out there for Derry they go short with that one up there as far as Quinn now Quinn takes that Quinn tries to go past her player she does well to feed that on there as far as McKenna McKenna then plays that up the line they're keeping coming down this near side of the field nicely taken there by McAllister again McAllister gives that over the top she's looking for the return she gets the return now McAllister has it she's looking to as she's heading down towards goal she has Hegarty inside now Hegarty has a chance things open up for her on her left hand side she manages to angle that one in tough enough angle again she was on the run but she made it look easy second score of the day there from Mary Hegarty Derry are looking dangerous at the moment they do get the ball just when they managed to open things up there the likes of McAllister getting on the ball there open things up had support left and right gave it out to the left and Hegarty finished Murphy now again huge one dropping batted back down again it's going to be picked up there by Mairead Kennedy Mairead oh pulled on it clash of the ash you won't see that too often the referee says 50-50 play on this is championship as that's played down into the corner again the ball isn't going to win the race it's just about kept in really well kept in there by Hegarty again she's trying her best to stop that one going out eventually has gone out and which way has the linesman has decided that is going to be go the way of Kilkenny a tough one to decide there PJ O'Mull the dairy manager here in front of us isn't happy about that he's given the referee the white of his eye there just to say come on give us the next one please the referee has the best view of that the linesman in fairness has the best view of that he's decided it's going Kilkenny's way and that's what's going to happen at this stage so two and a half minutes gone in this second half Neve Lee to take this one I'll learn intermediate champion back in 2016 the accountant she won a soaring all-star award there in 2021 as well of course and now she's looking to take this line ball plenty of pace on that one but it goes straight to McKenna now McKenna has it she has support inside she's looking for her support the support isn't going to come as McGuigan is going to go for that herself McGuigan takes a shot and McGuigan has got a fantastic score she took that so easily it didn't look like it had the power but she just made it look so nonchalant and swung it over the bar good score for McGuigan and Derry have started this second half at a huge rate that's two points they've got in this second half Kilkenny yet to score eight points to five in total dropping there again we look like there's a change for Kilkenny our no Claire Doheny was already on she's number 29 if you're just joining us late you're seeing that McAllister now has it again Rachel McAllister this time she's stopped her momentum is stopped and the ball has gone to ground four players again converging on top of this and looks like it's going to be is it going to come up eventually it is it looks like it's Kilkenny player who has it driving out that's Laura Green Laura Green was brilliant in that first half got two points and now she's got her side of free and is she going to go back and take it herself no she's not she's going to give it to Emma Minogue won a Leinster club as we said in 2022 She's actually left and so I'm going to go in forward. I can do a little bit more damage in there and Hannah Scott is going to take this one. So Hannah, where is she going to go with this one? Is she going to try and go direct or is she going to drop it in? That one looks like it might drop short in around the square. Again, no one claims possession just yet. It's still there. It's still on the ground. It's Derry. We're going to dig this one out and come away with a good accurate hand pass and again good work through the lines good work through the hands and it's O'Kane now who has it O'Kane has been trailed but she managed to clear the ball before a tackle comes in it's over here again Kilkenny look to have the advantage here they look to have it there through Leahy Leahy plays that forward three or four yards Kilkenny holding on to this one just slightly a bit slow at this clearance there on the second attempt she gets another goal up as far as Kennedy now Ray Kennedy is looking inside good intelligent ball inside it was accurate which is the main thing there's runners left and right one of those runners is Cantwell Cantwell comes inside oh great vision what a ball well taken and now there's a real chance for Kilkenny they're the really well move in as far as Dohany Dohany looks over the post but Dohany has hit that to the right and wide and Kilkenny deserved a score there really a really good stick work really good passing really intricate play just opening things up opening up the channels 
Dohany's shot just went to the right and wide in the end. Eight points to five is still the score. Almost five minutes gone in the second half. Cribben goes with that one again. Cribben dropping that one again. And it's Derry who are just looking around trying to open things up. And that one is McAllister. McAllister goes across the field. Good diagonal ball. Well taken there by, by Lennon. Lennon is on the ball now. Lennon is going up to the 21. She has the board outside. She uses that support. And is there a chance there? Maybe that is McAllister on the far side of the field. Derry still have her trying to work something from this over there around the 14 yard line. It's dropped. It's picked up again. And Derry have, can they work something from here? Back inside, back as far as Lennon who started his move. She's half hooked there. Can she get her in this second attempt? Really good defending from Kilkenny. They had five players around that. The hook came in and no score comes out of that one, which will have the Kilkenny faithful delighted with that one as Quigley now has the ball Quigley full of running as she plays that down the line there's too many Derry players there for her to manage to find the player but really good work there by Barco wasn't giving up that easy put in a stick and knocks it out and it's going to be a line ball and now it looks like we have another change there for Kilkenny number 19 is coming onto the field number 19 is Ellen Gunner I think is making her way onto the field Ellen Gunner played in the quarter final against Wexford of course and made a fair contribution in that uh, hoping to do something similar here today she's on for the last what 25 odd minutes of this game of this second half I was going to say with this game in total she's in now is Ellen Gunner and it's going to be a line ball on the far side of the field so line ball for Derry far side of the field just waiting for the Kilkenny player to leave the field before he gets things going again and we see a few of the Mead players for the second game here in front of us warming up as well second game coming up at 3 o'clock West Mead against Mead in that one still just stuck on the ground there neither set of players can get onto that and hasn't managed to work its way out over the line ball it hasn't it hasn't worked its way over the line it's still there it's still being fought for and still on the ground a little bit messy over there a lot of players pulling dragging on that and it's just hopped up there nicely there for Laura Green now Green is on it Green is half block Kilkenny hold on to this one far side of the field and Derry just have too many numbers over here there's a bit of space that they can exploit and run into and that's exactly what they do really good running here from the Derry defence up the field good stick pass forward waiting for the return Derry still trying to work something from this they managed to work it inside that was really good running there from McKenna who set up this move it's in around the house it's dangerous oh it's well read it was brave really brave goalkeeping there from Murphy she came out she was stood up there as she gathered the ball and the referee is said well he's blowing the whistle he hasn't actually given an action just yet but there was definitely a bit of danger as the ball dropped in there Murphy was really alert on the Kilkenny goal as she came out there was three or four players coming in on top of her Murphy was out then a big clash there with the Derry full forward as she was coming out there Amy Lennon just wasn't going to make it easy it's got interest to see is it going to be a free in is it going to be a free out the referee will have to make that decision he's going in talking to his umpires he'll be He'll want to get this right because this one could be crucial. If it's a penalty, a goal is a huge thing in this game, particularly at the scoring being so, I suppose, pivotal and eight points to five. Every score is a potential game winner. So it'll be interesting to see what is going to happen here. It looks like Murphy came out and Cassidy, the Derry full forward, came out. They had, it was a clash. They ran into each other, essentially. What is going to be decided here? Oh, there's a card. The Kilkenny goalie looks like she's getting a yellow card there for that one, though. So he referee maybe saw it a bit different how we saw it. So it is going to be a penalty, which is the big thing. So Tlina Murphy came out there. She was a judge to have fouled Amy Lennon. Amy Lennon just wouldn't let her out. And now it's going to be a penalty and a chance for Derry. This could be crucial. This could be huge if they can get something from this. Standing over this one. Here we go. Higher, lower, going low. It's well saved, though. Brilliantly saved. There's still a chance that Derry haven't fully cleared the ball just yet. They're trying to work it out inside the 14. Stick pass comes across. The Kilkenny players are all doing everything they can. They've saved the penalty. They don't want to concede anything from that. Derry still have possession here. Again, four or five players. Again, Derry have managed to work it out to McAllister again. McAllister goes out as far as McGuigan. McGuigan now has it. McGuigan is going away from the goals. Derry want to get something from this. It's McKenna. McKenna, can she get some kind of consolation? No, she can. And that's gone to the right and wide. And that penalty is something that we'll probably be looking back on for a long time to come because this game was really decided as a result of that. Derry seemed to do everything right. It was Aoife Shaw took it. Aoife Shaw went low, but Murphy was behind that. Murphy held her ground really well, and Shaw's penalty was well saved. So Clina Murphy, she gave away the penalty, but then she stood up, made amends, and saved the penalty. And Seamus Kelly and the rest of the Kilkenny management will be delighted with her for doing that. She's on a yellow card now, so she will have to be careful. And Sterry, who are back in possession of the ball, they lead by three points, but it could have been so much more. And that one has worked down inside into the corner. Again, Derry just seemed to have a bit of zip about them at the moment. Out in front of that one, well picked up. 
Good work there again. Worked outside. It looks like it's hurt for Lennon again. It's going to drop inside. They were even trying to get it in as far as Hegarty. Hegarty didn't get it. It was good defended in there by Leahy. Now Leahy goes back as far as the goalie Murphy. And Murphy has plenty of time and space and her confidence must be up after making that penalty save. And she drives out with all her heart and soul but she drives it straight into a Derry player. And now they're coming forward. There's a bit of a push there as Quinn starts to come out. There was a push in the back. The referee says to go back. He's saying there was too many catches, I'm sure. A bit of confusion there in the referee and the lines and a P. John Mullen. They're all having a few issues there. there we're we're going to go back and it is going to be a, free, a, a bit of discussion going on here in the press box. A few of the Kilkenny journalists feeling the ball was gone out of play before the foul was committed. So we will see. The referee isn't going to change his mind on this one. It is going to be a free and a free for Derry and a chance for McAllister to go again. She has three already today. Can she make it four? She got really got a hold of that one as she knocks it in. That one is curling and that one wouldn't, you know, has curled right over the crossbar. That is a fantastic effort for McAllister. She's up to number four for the day, right out by the sideline. Really exquisite execution there of the free. And now it's nine points to five and can Kenny have it again? There is a bit of space to look up to her. Play it down inside again. Derry just seemed to have that extra player back all the time. He's just able to mop things up and stop Kilkenny creating from building at and back there. It's McGill now who has the ball. She's gone to ground. In fact, it's Quinn. Sneave Quinn who has it. She throws the ball up in the air. She tries to get out there. A high tackle. The referee says he took his time about deciding that one. And eventually he had judged that Neve Quinn had taken too many steps. And it's going to be a free in. And a free in and a chance for Emma Minogue. Maybe the referee was balancing the books slightly there for the one a couple of minutes ago. But it gives Emma Minogue now a chance right on the 45 to get Kilkenny's first score of the second half. So here goes Minogue. Minogue right on the 45. Not an easy one. But she looks to have managed to curl that in. It's dropping dangerously. It's batted back out. But Derry just have the numbers there. It looks like they're going to clear this one. And Minogue though, picks it up. She took the free immediately. originally. She doesn't have it. But it's going to go back outside. They're looking for Quigley. Really good defending there from Derry again. That looked like it was Lauren McKenna. who has been brilliant this second half so far. She's been involved in everything good Derry have done. And now McAllister. Who's come all the way back to the field. She saw a bit of space in the far side of the field. But Hannah Scott saw it too. And Hannah's onto that now. Hannah has it on the second or third attempt. Now two Derry players coming in top of her. Hannah still has it. Hannah's on her way. She tries to kick that forward. The referee says a foul there. Hannah did really well there. That's the kind of inspiring play you get from your captain, from Hannah Scott there. The ball, really, she wasn't a favour to win that ball. She got out that. She was brave. She was tackled. She rode a tackle. She was fouled. And she wins her side a free. A free in a, not an easy free, but in a scorer position. And it gives them a chance to get another score. So there's been a few different free takers for Kilkenny so far in this game. They've yet to really find a settled player. Now they're going again. It looks like Gunner who's on to that one. Gunner has struck that one. She struck it to the left and wide. She's a third or fourth different free taker we've seen for Kilkenny in this game. Emma Noak has scored one. But they, they're playing her on this side of the field and maybe letting Ellen Gunner take the ones on the far side of the field. But the score remains 9 points to 5 in favour of Derry. And they're on the ball again. They're on the march again through O'Kane. O'Kane gets a lovely little 1 2 back as far as McGill. McGill plays that into the corner. Again, Kilkenny just seemed to have the extra man back or extra player back there picking up the ball and letting the world ball do the work down to Gunner again Gunner comes onto her right hand side but she was a bit too slow about it but she gets it on the second attempt comes back inside as far as Cantwell Cantwell though again maybe delayed slightly and you can't do that against this Derry side as the ball let that down down the side again and it's been well fought for over there there's two Kilkenny players there's only one Derry player now there's two on top of it but the ball just won't come up for either I'd say the referee will have to think about maybe throwing the ball in here it's still on the ground has it managed to squeeze out too many steps there he says and I think he's decided it's going to be a free in. That's exactly why he's decided a free in for Derry for too many steps. And it's going to be a free in now for Derry just inside the 45. So Derry's free taker making their way over to take that one. Is it going to be Aoife Shaw again? Yes, of course it is. It's Aoife Shaw who's standing over this one. She missed the penalty a couple of minutes ago. And now she's going with this one on the far side of the field awkward enough angle can she convert she's going with that one the crowd over there seemed to like that the Derry crowd were behind that from the very minute it struck her hurley and well they might be as she manages to knock that one over the bar she missed the penalty but she gets her free there and just keeps her side moving forward again 10 points to 5 it's double scores her side lead by 5 and just like that halfway through the second half Derry are looking good they're on the ball once again off the knees that was played forward it looked like it was McGill who played that in just too well hit then maybe in the end and Kilkenny have a chance but maybe just cleared away there 
with lack of composure slightly there as McKenna gets onto that McKenna couldn't control it now Kilkenny have it back again McKenna isn't giving up on this though she sticks to Hurley in not letting the Kilkenny player out that Kilkenny player looks to be need feeling she plays it on and now up as far as Green Green on the ball again Green was being shut down but managed to get the, the pass away anyway licks it in around the house into Eminog Eminog clears that outside clears out as far as Dahani Dahani has it now she's under a bit of pressure but here goes Dahani she's going for the goal here's Dahani trying to get the shot away Dahani inside she throws it up and won't come down for her and Derry just by sheer strength and numbers manages to stop that coming into Dahani's pad and stop her making the connection that was heading for the goal Derry will be delighted how they offended that the ball is still there it's still back outside as far as Barco Barco plays a low inside can Kenny have goal in her mind at the moment Derry don't want that happening Emma Minogue is in there on top of that so a 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 Derry players in there as well and Derry look like they've done enough and they have they've weathered the storm they come out it's cleared out again by McKenna who's roared into this game in the second half what a ball to McNichol McNichol has it now again here goes Murray at a point from the first half plays that across the field and Derry's tails are up after that maybe there was a dunt in the back there the referees has play on Eve Lee definitely came in strong and made sure she was winning that ball she plays it back down the line again it's out by the side and Dahani has it tries to get the first touch another good strong tackle there coming in from Quinn and Quinn has managed to muscle her out Dahani out of it the ball has been not controlled brilliantly well and it's gone out for a sideline ball and it's going to be Laura Green and that was a fairly frantic couple of moments there in this semi-final as it looked like Derry or Kilkenny were odds on to get a goal and it looks like Derry are about to make another change there number 23 has come onto the field for them 23 is Orla Hull she's onto the field for 15 or so minutes so Orla is in and it looked like number 14 there Amy Lennon has made her way off the field after giving it her all for that 46 odd minutes or so so we have a, a brief pause here while the substitute happened and was quickly taken there eventually by Green when she did get a chance to go she plays up the line up as far as Quigley's involved in this one Quigley plays that back outside it's all lovely picked up there by Green now Green has it again she's a real burst of pace when she gets a chance here goes Green on her right hand side another block coming in comes back to Green again Green now on the left Green oh just didn't have the power on that she was half blocked as well is it still there still to be fought for now Gunning Gunning plays it across the field here's a chance from Barco Barco it's bouncing it's well saved it bounced two or three lines off the ground and needs if Gribben was behind it all day long when it hit the ground it took some of the power out of it made it slightly easier for Gribben but the civil engineer back there in the goal did well to stop that made sure it didn't get past her and now Derry have the chance that's played across the field by Hegarty now there's a chance to run into is it Shaw on the far side of the field is out in front of this she has it she loses her footing holds on to the ball though good defending from a Kilkenny perspective because it's one on one stuff over there still being fought for still Shaw trying to get on top of this it's still over there oh it just won't come up for either set of players it's going to, is it going to come up now from a Kilkenny perspective yes it is just got a couple more numbers in there oh good block coming in there again there's nothing easy given in this game so far an all Ireland semi-final a chance to play in Crow Park on the 6th of August is on the line Clear up the field now. Kilkenny are trying to find Emma Noga. Emma Noga though is beaten on this occasion, but she's still there. She's not letting that come out. But Derry just looks like they have the composure. They have the numbers back there at the moment. Not a brilliant hand pass. It's going to be cleared. Oh, it just couldn't be controlled there from a Kilkenny perspective. It's gone out of play, and it's going to be a line ball to Derry. And one, I'd say, there'll be in no hurry to take. The sense of energy and enthusiasm, I suppose, and excitement has risen in this game the last couple of minutes. As is Kilkenny are realising, we need to get going, and Derry are going, we're getting so close to this All-Ireland final, you can sense a bit of nervousness coming into both sets of players. Kilkenny look like they might be introducing another player down there as well. Emma Mulhall is warming up in front of us, we will probably see her shortly, but we will keep with the play for now, as this one is played across the field. In around the edge of the D2, Derry players go for that. It's dropped. There might be a chance for Kilkenny if they get onto this. They have it. Have they got it? Oh, they just lose their footing. The ball is still there. Still a chance. Either set of players just hadn't managed to get possession of it yet. Hits off a helmet. I think Ellen Gunning was in on that originally. She just couldn't get it up. And the ball again is clear. Derry living on their nerves a little bit back there. Kilkenny haven't given up on this. Still on the attack here. Still driving forward here. Three Kilkenny players come in. The referee has said there's a chop down chop down. And what has he decided? He decided it's going to be a free in. And Emma Mulhall is about to come on. So a chance, yeah, Emma Mulhall, number 20, making her way onto the field. And the weather here, we've mentioned it a few times, it's very warm, it's sapping of energy. So we will see plenty of subs coming maybe in the last 10 minutes or so as both sides try to give it their all. And as it looks like it's going to be Gunner over there again is going to take this one. Ellen Gunner. We've seen him do, try a different few takers throughout today. Ellen had one herself a couple of minutes that didn't go her way. This time it does. And it just makes them that slightly little bit closer. Again, just four points in this game. 
10 points to 6 in favour of Derry now this one is driven long by Gribben Gribben drops that around to 265 it's still there it's going to be picked up there by McAllister now McAllister she's two kill Kenny Blair's on her heels but she's still going she's still going strong now eventually she's forced backwards she's holding on to the ball and nearly ran into the referee there did McAllister she goes across the field good intelligent accurate ball she's looking for a return now there's a chance for Derry to keep it going here they've worked it inside there as far as McAllister again she started this move can she finish it she can't and that would be a real energy sapping one because she worked hard for that, played it outside, then got the return pass and got the shot away in the end, but it went to the right and wide. And still four points in this one, ten points to six. Again, Emma Nog was underneath that one. She managed to put off the Derry player, didn't manage to get the ball initially. She's in there on top of that Derry, fighting hard for this one too as well. It's still on the ground. Emma Nog is going to come out with it eventually. Emma is looking up down looking up everywhere she can and she plays that inside again a touch came in there from Gunner Gunner got that one managed to move the ball forward she hurt herself in the process but it's worked his way in there as far as Trace Donnelly Trace has been well marshaled in there by two or three Derry players and it's going to be Quinn who's going to come out with that Neve Quinn Neve Quinn did really well she was fouled as a high tackle and a free out good strong defender from Derry they really want to keep this clean sheet and they're going the right way about it with less than 10 minutes left in this All-Ireland semi-final Still, this one is in the melting pot. Just the four points in it. Nick Hossig now plays that up the line. Good, low, accurate one. Just doesn't stay in the hand, unfortunately, from this occasion, from McAllister's perspective. It's still there. It's not It's not clear who has it until out of the forest comes Laura Green. Here comes Laura again. Laura plays that forward. She was trying to get it in as far as Gunner, I think, but the ball doesn't go well. Oh, what a tackle again there by Green. Threw her body onto that. But as luck would have from her perspective, Neve Quinn managed to pick up the block and clear it back down the field. But can Kenny are back in position again? Hannah Scott now. Hannah Scott turns and clears that. And no look drive down the field. And it's well picked up there again. From a Derry's perspective, there's a foul coming in and there's going to be a free out. And again, this will again work out in favour of Derry, provided their player isn't too badly injured on the far side of the field. We're going to pause while she receives a bit of attention over there on the far side of the field. Hard to mark out which player it is just yet. We might get a closer shot of that in a couple of seconds. Yeah, looks to be Neve Lee. He's been brilliant so far back there. Not Neve, Neve Quinn, I should say. Neve Quinn, who's been immense at cornerback for Derry. And again, she knew that one was probably going to hurt, but she still held her ground, put in the tackle and did well. And has won her side a free. And a f- Look at that time. Eight, less than eight minutes to go and it gives Derry just a chance to reset to steady themselves and see what they can do for the next eight minutes Kilkenny I suppose can also use this time though, to get a few, a few instructions in there from Seamus Kelly give him a couple of different words of encouragement give him a couple of different maybe ideas of what to try as we get going again Nikasi again goes with this one goes long around the 45 it's well oh it was nearly well caught now it's gone to ground again it's still there and Derry have managed to They've managed to actually concede a free on this equation. It's gone the other way. It's going to be a free out, a free out to Kilkenny. And I think we're going to have more movement down on the bench. Another sub there coming on. Again, it looks like to be a Derry one. Anya McGill, who was due to start, and we were told would start, is introduced to the fray. And off comes Emer McGuigan. So, seven minutes left in this one plus what will ever be added on and there will be a few minutes added on in this one so as you said a minute ago all to play over here just four points in this one that one's dropping again around the edge of the D and it seems to just hop up lovely there from a Kilkenny perspective driving through and an easy score just you can't give any kind of an opportunity to these Kilkenny forwards that's Ellen Gunner she's on to that again she scored one from a free a minute oh it's the fact it was Dohany Dohany was on to that snapped it up ran straight through on goal and converted it really good well good for Dohany she'll be hoping if her side make the final she will start the next day and do whatever she can to make that decision a hard one for her manager so we're down to three now and can happen in these games a dangerous lead is a goal as these players start to tire what is going to happen it remains to be seen in this exciting all Ireland intermediate semi-final Gribben now of Derry with the ball in her hands made a good save not so long ago and now she drives that long down again it's going to drop kindly from a Derry perspective they're onto this and they're working hard that one looked like it was McAllister again she was half hooked in fact it was Hegarty Hegarty didn't manage to make connection with the ball and Kilkenny take that chance to go back down and start another attack well taken in the air what a take there brilliantly taken by Barco Barco loses possession really good defending back there from Derry and they've worked it back down the field again 
That one is well over the top. And can Derry build from here? That one wasn't picked up easily. Hannah Scott went up for it, but didn't come down with it. And now Derry have a chance. Now they're going forward there. Amy Lennon plays that one over the top. Oh, that was a really good bat there. Came in from a Kilkenny defensive point of view and stopped that one going over the top. It's still there now. Kilkenny have this one back inside their own defence, working it out. Hannah Scott, she was held there, but she plays that couple of feet forward. Kilkenny holding on to this. The referee is his hand up. They have a free. They have a free out. And this that is one they really, really wanted as they give them a chance to just look around, take a breath and go with another attack. We're into the last five minutes and out comes Kleena Murphy to take this one. She's going to launch this one as far as she can away from her own goals. Launch it in around the danger zone. Launch it over the crosser if she can at all. She's checking the breeze. Knows her side are just three points down. One step away from playing in the All-Ireland final. The winner here will go on and represent... Well, represent our people in Crow Park. And that one is dropped down to Minogue again. And Minogue, here she goes. And Minogue takes a couple of steps. Tries to come inside. The ball is still there to be won. Who is going to win it? Oh, it looks like Kenny have it across to Barco. Barco lost her footing at the right vital moment. And Derry just take the opportunity there to come away. The referee says play on as that one goes to ground again. It's still there. Just one hop up for anyone. Now Kenny have it. Managed to work it out as far as Cantwell there. Cantwell is half blocked. It comes out to Feeling now. Now Feeling in a bit of time and space. Throws her hardly behind that one. Throws it accurately. And throws it over the crossbar me feeling it come up from number 5 the player of the match in the county final back in 2021 minor all earned of course in 2021 and part of the senior panel last year and you can see all that experience was brought to bear there she came in and knocked it over the crossbar 10 points eight, just 2 in it now the most dangerous lead in GA as we approach 3 and a half minutes left of normal time now a Derry player it's Lauren McKenna is down receiving a bit of attention Lauren as we mentioned a few times this second half in particular has roared into this game and she was involved in something there and she's down receiving a bit of attention and she'll be doing her very best to play on and she's up on her feet it's always good to see she's going to put on the helmet we're going to go again for the last two and a half minutes or so plus what will be added on at the end of this one this is of course the first of the double header here in FBD Semmel Stadium and it'll be, the second one is Mead against West Mead. That'll be live right here on this stream. Don't move. Mead against West Mead coming up at 3 o'clock once we decide who has gone through here. As Derry come on the attack again. It was Aoife Shaw who had it. Aoife plays it inside as far as McNichol. McNichol tried to throw that forward a little bit for herself. Didn't manage to get a connection on that. But Derry still have it. There's a forest of players there again coming through there. Again, it's on the ground. Again, it's not really in possession of either team just yet. Another bit of a rock has formed. Who's going to come out with it? It's Derry. Derry have come out with that. They've knocked it out as far as McAllister again. Derry's danger player. And the referee has said... The referee has given a free. He's given a free to Kilkenny. Not quite sure what that was for. But it's going to be either way a free out. A free out to Kilkenny. And as we... Two and a half minutes left in this one. The next score you feel will be a vital one. And it's Hannah Scott who has it. The impetus is with Kilkenny at the moment. And they're going again. That one is knocked down inside. Oh, big tackle coming in there. Hand around the waist. The referee says play on. The ball just won't come up. And it's still there. It's gone out of play. And it's going to be which way? It's going away. It's a Derry line ball. M. Mulhall was trying to get that one up from a Kilkenny perspective. But it wouldn't come up for her. And now it's Sinead McGill. Sinead has it here in front of us. Between the 45 and 65. She's looking for a few runners. There's no obvious player in front of her. So I think she's just going to put everyone she has behind it. And play it up the line. But she plays it straight to a Kilkenny hand. But that hand doesn't hold it initially. And now we just saw her score a few minutes ago. Feeling. Feeling plays it on to Minogue. Emma Minogue just outside the 45. In a center of position. Emma takes the shot. And Emma gets the score. Number three for Emma Minogue. And we're down to a one point game. As we come in 90 seconds or so left of normal time. This one does have to be decided on the day. So we could have extra time and 45 to decide this one if it comes to it. But Derry or Kilkenny don't want that happening. Now it's Derry on the ball again. Coming out with this one. It's McAllister again. As she heads laterally across the field. Gets a bit of support there from Nikasik. Nikasik plays that one up again. Again Hannah Scott. Six in a hurry. Really intelligent play there from Scott. As she manages to win that ball. And comes away with it. Plays it up the field now. Oh great take here now. And things are opening up from a Kilkenny perspective. They're a point down into Emma Noog. She got the point a minute ago. Here comes Emma. Three Derry players try to stop her. She's still going strong. There was a high tackle came in there left the referee with no choice only to give a free in and just outside the edge of the D now Emma no was fouled is she going to take it herself maybe not we've seen Gunner take a few already today but it was Minogue again. We talked about her in the first half. She's a real tenacious player. She got in the ball there and tried to drive forward. The Derry players were left in no option only to bring her down. She's not going to take the free herself. There is going to be a free to Kilkenny. 
And we're going to be all square if this one goes over the cross. We're just on the edge of the D. Ellen Gunner. Ellen Gunner has already scored when you'd imagine this one is well within her range. It's well within her locker and she managed to convert out with great ease. She's knocked it over two points for the substitute. And look at that scoreboard now. Ten points apiece here in FBD Semple Stadium with nine seconds of normal time according to the clock here in the stadium. How much will the referee play remains to be seen? Who will get the next score? We've mentioned it a few times. The next score will be vital. And Kilkenny seem to be getting the last couple of scores. They've done the last three or four in a row. Derry need to stop that tight. We're going to have five minutes. That is game-changing amount of time. In the last five minutes, we've seen the game ebb and flow in many ways. Five minutes really brings anything can happen in the next five minutes. With the game at ten apiece, though, you don't want to be conceding anymore. Now the ball is dropping again. Three Derry players, two Kilkenny players. Who's it going to come out to? It's still there. Kilkenny look to have it, but just as I say that then, a Derry Hurley goes in there. In a, a Gunner is on top of that. She scored a free a minute ago. A couple of Derry players in there as well. McGill is around waiting for that to come out. I think he's decided I'm going to throw this in. Has the referee. Yes, that's exactly what he's going to do. Derry really need to defend well here. Kilkenny want to get up the ball and attack. Derry want to win it and go down the other end of the field. Try and tell the players to move on. They don't want to take a step back in this all Ireland semi-final. Now Derry have picked it up and they're coming away. That looked like Nikasik. In fact, it wasn't. It was McGill. McGill's pass doesn't go to handle. And it's turned over, but Derry have players back there. And they managed to come out with this one. Big tackle coming in there on McKenna. McKenna did well to ride that tackle. Plays it back outside as far as McAllister, who's... A fair distance back away from the attacking goal, but she plays that across the field. And now Derry have a chance. There is a bit of space up the field here. Good hand pass inside. Now it's going to be left down inside. It was half blocked though, and there seems to be more Kilkenny players around here, around this one. They've managed to pick it up. It's back in the hand again, and Kilkenny can start an attack from back here, from what would have been an advantage to Derry. But that one isn't accurate. Now it's going to be a line ball to Derry. A chance for them to take one between the 45 and 65 back inside their own half. They need to get the ball to the other end of the field. Kilkenny will want to pin him back in here. 10 points apiece. Coming up on 62 minutes. We're expected to play 65. The board went up a few minutes ago. Five minutes to be added on, they told us. We've played one and a half of them. One forty-five of them even. That goes across the field. Kilkenny have managed to pick that up again through Barco Barco plays that forward it's 2-1-1 on one in favour of Derry but Kilkenny have got it now there's a chance now things have opened up it comes back outside still Kilkenny on the attack they have the ball the shot going away from the goal Emma Mall Hall Emma Mall Hall oh it drops just short really well saved there by Griffin she had to follow that the whole way in a few people here thought that was over a few people here thought it was onto the back of the net not Neve Griffin she was behind it and made sure it didn't go past her and the score remains 10 points apiece and it's still there now. Kilkenny on this one again. They believe they can go forward. They had the last few chances and now they're trying to create another one. That's going to drop short inside. Derry need to defend this one well. And that's what they're trying to do at the moment. Really good stick work inside there. But Kilkenny still have it. Trying to work something from the far 45. Working it back outside. Kilkenny still have it through Mull Hall. She nearly scored a minute ago. Now Kilkenny are trying to actually get a score. A shot coming in there. The referee says get up there on that one. It was half a hook, half a block. Out of a load of players. Emma, Emma Minogue has managed to somehow get the time. Get the space, turn, and put that over the crossbar. It's number four for Emma Noog. And is that going to be the most vital one of the day? Ten points to eleven. Ten points to eleven, Kilkenny lead. As we approach the 63rd minute, we'll have two more minutes. As Kilkenny come again, a huge distance out. This one is going to drop. Again, Neve Gribben is behind that. Neve plays it up as far as McKenna. McKenna now has it. McKenna's ball isn't that accurate, though. It's turned over again by Cantwell. Cantwell gives it in far of Trez Donnelly. Trez plays that for a couple of yards, but Derry have turned that over again. Really good play from Derry, and now they come out up the field. They know there's only a point in this one. They can get that if they can get going. That's played out to the side again. Good juggling work there by McAllister. McAllister plays that in as far as O'Kane. Now O'Kane has it. O'Kane believes the crowd are getting behind her. She plays that one inside. It's going to drop. It's going to drop right into the hands. Turn and shot there from Hegarty. Oh, what a save! Was it going wide on you? We'll have to look back on that maybe. But what a save there, Hegarty. He took her shot the keeper got down low Murphy in the Kilkenny goal made sure that wasn't going past her really good play though from a Derry perspective they've been under the cosh for the last few minutes as that ball came in it was dropping in it was really well taken turned and shot and the shot was well saved in the end from a Kilkenny perspective but we do now have a chance for Derry to level things up again on the 45 yard line one point behind is what Aoife Shaw will see when she looks up at that scoreboard. 11 points to 10. We've about 45 seconds left of normal time. We do have another game to throw in here at 3 o'clock. 
whether that will happen remains to be seen whether this one goes to extra time or not but here goes Derry here goes Eva Shaw Eva Shaw she looked calm she looked composed as she struck that and she strikes it between the post and over the crossbar and Kilkenny are about to make another sub Caroline Kennedy has come onto the field she was due to start she's wearing number 14 she comes on in place of Sarah Barco who's given her all in the last 64 or so odd minutes so it's 11 points apiece here how much more will the referee play he was due to play 65 minutes we played 64 minutes and 53 seconds now so in theory this should be the last puck out we have had a few stoppages since that five minutes though so he might play another minute he has the whistle to his mouth at the moment and he's blowing it up and we are going to extra time the feast of camogie is never ending here and it's not going to end in Semble Stadium for another while we're going to take a pause and then we're going to have to come back with more extra time the full time score here is while I get a chance to go and gather my breath but the half, full time score here we will have extra time in a couple of minutes time full time score here is Derry 11 points Kilkenny 11 points stay with us for full coverage of extra time
Welcome back to FBD Semple Stadium. My name is Paul Jenkins and you're getting an extra bit of camogie action here today. This one has gone to extra time. Derry 11 points, Kilkenny 11 points. Hard to know who's happier, I suppose, to bring in this to extra time. Kilkenny maybe felt they had it won, then Derry got that last free. But 11 points apiece is how we stand. And we're going to have two, ten more minutes worth of camogie to decide who will go on and play in the All-Ireland final on the 6th of August. Trying to keep an eye out, see if there are any changes that we hadn't seen in the full 60. Don't spot that too easy just yet. The Derry jerseys, particularly hard to see the digits on at all times. We don't see anything new just yet. And it looks like Gavin Dunnigan has dropped the ball in and away we go for the first 10 minutes of this extra time. Important to get a good start for both sides. Both sides will feel they want to get an early score. Kilkenny did dominate that second half. But Derry owned the first half. So who is going to own this first half of extra time? As Derry look like they're in possession of the ball at the moment. They're going to work things down the near side of the field. Good ball down inside, just by the sideline. Good work in there as far as McNichol. McNichol plays that back inside as far as McAllister. McAllister gives it inside and things have opened up from a Derry's perspective. The shot is coming in and that's knocked over the bar and that's a good early score from Derry. It looked like it was Derville okay who got on the end of that one. She worked herself in, was unmarked as she just ghosted into a bit of space there and had an easy task then and knocked it over the bar. 12-11 they lead now in the early stages of this first half of extra time that one has dropped there now Kilkenny fighting for that one again but it looks like is it going to be Kilkenny are going to come out with it yes it is they've worked it back outside and now just a bit of space here going to knock out as far as feeling now Roshan feeling couldn't control the first time it gets it on the second occasion the couple of players standing around her she plays it inside a little bit blind I'm not sure she knows exactly what she was aiming for there but she managed to get it in and Kilkenny could create something inside here around that 21 yard line ferocious tackles going in there really no one wants to take a step back now we've gone as far as extra time you definitely don't want to lose it and Derry real tenacious back there in their own defence coming out with that one and clearing it way down the field but it looks like there's going to be too many Kilkenny players oh just as I say that though what a sprint there across forces Jenny O'Dee to come across Jenny O'Dee maybe got a bit of a slobber there for that but she'll shake that off she gives it up to Neve Lee and Neve Lee clears it brilliant catch there and Derry try to come and build again they're having to work really hard for everything but they are happy to do that now they're going for a good hand pass inside there looks like it is as far as McGill McGill has it the pass doesn't go to hand though still there and Derry still on it working it back as far as McAllister who's really been a standout player for them today she plays it across the field that one is going to bounce kindly really well worked used her body really did well did Mary Hegarty again she threw it up and it never came back down where she would have liked it to come back down at very least but Derry still have it two on two here in this little skirmish and Derry have come away with it through McNichol McNichol just doesn't get the purchase oh has she it's managed to worm its way through Derry are on the attack if they can just get back up to their feet there could be a chance of a goal on here kick, kick, three kick any players then come in on top of it and make sure no Derry attack is going to get a score there and that one is cleared just maybe 10 or 15 yards but it's going to drop again to Mary Hegarty Mary can't get it and it's going to be Dahani now who has it Dahani nearly tackled Hannah Scott there but Hannah says leave it to me I have it and she clears it down the line but there isn't going to be enough Kilkenny players back there and it's easy picked up by Nikasig she plays it back inside and Derry are going to build from the back line good stick pass oh it's nearly too good it's too much pace in it. and it manages to dribble its way past three or four players before Kilkenny get it back there through Dahani Dahani has it now gives it back as far as Green Green despite being half blocked still gets the ball away but it wasn't an accurate one and McKenna stood up to that one and found it really well she plays it back down the line she's trying to play it down as far as Orla Hall I think on the far side of the field takes a couple of deflections and goes out of play and it's going to be a line ball to Kilkenny and just gives them a chance to reposition themselves again get their players back and think about how they're going to attack going forward Neve Lahey goes play up the line she doesn't get a huge amount of distance on that and Derry now have a chance now they're going forward couple of players running left and right she takes it on herself oh it just goes to the right and wide not enough power or accuracy really on that one and Derry may rue that chance but they'll be happy to keep the ball up this side of the field that looked like it was Emer Doherty who had the shot there number 18 for Derry who has come onto the field Emer Doherty with that one. She did really well with that one, and that one is played over the 45. Derry coming on the attack there. They have been more dominant in this extra time. They picked it up through McNichol again. McNichol plays that forward to Doherty. She had a chance a couple of seconds ago. She has the ball again. Where is she going to go with it? She goes to ground, but she's up again like Lazarus. Going forward, up to the 21. Shortens up the grip on the Hurley. And really good score. There was no space on for her. She had a chance a couple of seconds ago. Seemed to learn from that mistake. She was up. She was down. But she got her score. 
And that is an important one. Every score is going to be important in this extra time as we approach the halfway point in the first half. And it looks like number 30 for Kilkenny is going to come onto the field. Number 30 for Kilkenny is Aideen O'Connor. Was involved with the seniors as well, of course. So Aideen about to be introduced maybe on the next play. And Kilkenny, number 17, they're emptying the bench here. Katie Byrne is also warming up here in front of us. Dropping again there. Again, not easy. Nothing coming up clean. As you'd expect, I suppose. This is do or die. You're out or you're in the other and final. It's one or the other. It really is on a knife edge. So you don't want to lose any ball. And Derry have picked it up there through Downey. Downey forced out towards the sideline. Doesn't get a huge amount of distance on that and holding on to that. Playing down inside again. You'd fancy Derry to pick this one up. Really well taken there. Fantastic bit of skill there from McNichol. But she loses her footing just as she got the ball. And she's turned over there by Hannah Scott. And Hannah plays it down here. Kilkenny haven't been on the attack in the extra time just yet. But now they have the ball. And hopefully they can get a score from their own point of view. But good defending there from Derry. Just keeping them pinned in there between the 21 and the 14. They still have it though. Kilkenny making a couple of yards forward there. Managed to get out of a bit of space. Here comes forward. Here comes Kennedy. Caroline Kennedy. Caroline Kennedy has it been judged. That the free has gone against her. The referee has given a free out. And now both those Kilkenny substitutes are going to happen. Number 17 and number 30. Number 30 is Katie Byrne. Number 30 is Aideen O'Connor. Aideen, as we mentioned, who was involved with the Kilkenny seniors. They're out now, so she's allowed to play with the intermediates. They're both onto the field to play. And Derry have a free back inside their own 14-yard line. As we come up on six minutes gone in the first period of extra time. So lots of play still to go. Lots of time for both teams. Derry looking the better at the moment. 11 points to 13. That two point cushion could be vital. So it's Gribben now who's going to take this on. Gribben goes high over the 265. And it's going to be caught there by Ar- Hegarty. Hegarty now who's way out from her own goal. But she has that. Plays inside. There's a bit of pulling and dragging going on in there. And it's going to be a free in. Aideen O'Connor got involved in a bit of a tangle there with the Derry player. And it's going to be a free in for Derry on the far side of the field. Just inside the 45. And maybe a chance to move another bit forward. Push on their lead in this game. As they stand over to take this one. I presume it's going to be Aoife Shaw. The number 13 for Derry to go again. She she missed the penalty in the first half. That one is hit. No huge amount of power but had all the accuracy in the world. And that is the most important thing. And that has gone over the bar. And look at that score. They'll be happy to see that one. 14-11. They've pushed it out to three. They've pushed it out to that all-important goal. And that point there from Aoife Shaw just ensures that they have slightly more breathing room. But there's really no breathing room here in this all earned semi-final. As we saw, the way that first, second half, I should say, ended. With everyone throwing everything on it and pushing it on to this extra time. We're in extra time. We're seven and a half minutes nearly into it now. And there you have the ball again. They're heading towards the sideline. But they managed to work it back. Good interplay. Good team play from the Derry players. They work a lovely little triangle there to create a bit of space. That one is left down inside. Brilliantly taken. The hand goes up. The claw goes up. And they're on to it now. It's Aoife Shaw. He's Go forward on goal. Oh, it's dropped. Oh, hand goes in there. Back across there. Columb McNichol. McNichol has it. Now McNichol is heading away from goal, but she's able to get the shot away. She's able to get an accurate one. She gets it over the crossbar. Her second for the day and a vital one for Derry as they go four points clear. The crowd at the far side of the field. The Derry supporters have come alive with that one. You can hear them shouting, Derry, Derry, on the far side of the field. As that one is going to drop again. Brilliantly taken there by Laura Green. Laura has it now. Laura wants to drive her team back into this game. They're four points down. They do need to get a couple of scores. But the Derry defence is standing strong and tall again. And they're coming out. But just like I say that the ball has been turned over by Dohany. Dohany plays this. It's one on one inside. There is panic stages potentially. But Derry, Derry don't panic. They have enough players back there. Even Ikazi was onto that. She plays that one back. And Derry hold on to this one. Good short stick passing. And Derry just have enough back there enough where we're all to play it inside again and now another chance for McNichol McNichol is blocked by Hannah Scott but she picks up the rebound she was trying to play it out to Hegarty Hegarty was intercepted there brilliantly by Phelan Phelan plays it on Phelan is looking for a back she's not going to get it as it's played in there by Gunner Gunner's shot does or her pass doesn't go to hand but Kilkenny hold on to this one it's back there as far as Gunner again Gunner is looking up trying to get Kilkenny's opening score of this extra time but it's gone to the right and wide and it remains 15 points to 11 as we come into the last minute of this first half of extra time and it looks like Kilkenny are bringing back on Sarah Barco they took her off there in normal time she's come back on Emma Minogue they're 
taken off. Emma Noak, who was brilliant in the closing stages of that second half, finishes the game with four points, but she gave it her all, and they're introducing Sarah Barco back into the fray for the last 45-odd seconds of this first half of extra time and of course we'll have 10 minutes of extra time shortly after that now the ball is dropping down inside there flying over to get that there it looked like Emma Hall was trying to get onto that the ball has gone to ground it's still there in fact that was it O'Connor O'Connor has beaten to this and Derry now have a chance three or four players come in on top where the shot is going to come off though it's a high one is it an accurate one yes it is that's gone over the bar it's another fantastic score and Derry are looking good now they're absolutely flying it McAllister I think it was again who managed to get that one over the bar another fine score from her 16 points to 11 now her side lead with 10 seconds left of the first half of extra time that one is going to drop down again Hegarty Hegarty who's definitely come a lot deeper in this extra time and she's feeding players in all day long she plays that one down inside inside as far as Hull now Hull has it Hull goes past her player still Hull on the ball she's lost it twice but she's got it back twice she goes back outside now a shot coming in again for another difficult angle but again it's made look oh it's just gone to the left and wide it's nearly as good as a score at this stage I know we have 10 minutes left in the second half of extra time but I imagine that's going to be the end and it just as I say that it is the referee Gavin Dugan blows his half time whistle we'll call it in extra time and what a 10 minutes that was for Derry they now lead 16 points 11 we're going to take another quick break we'll probably try and show you the best bits of that opening 10 minutes of that first half of extra time and we'll be back with you then very very shortly Welcome back for what we imagine will be the last 10 minutes of action in this one. Derry against Kerry. 
we're into the second half of extra time Derry lead 6 points to 11 after putting on really a supercharged performance there in the first half of that extra time so 16-11 they lead as we approach the last 10 minutes or so and we're hearing that the Westmead Mead game if you're just tuning in to watch that one that one has been delayed now until half 3 as a result of the extra time here but we will have every puck of that game right here live on the Camogie Association YouTube channel so stay with us for that one but we're being told it will be half 3 when that one throws in so we're going to get going here for the last 10 minutes the ball is in the game is on 11 points to 16 Derry Lee Derry on the ball again and coming out with this one again working very hard like we've seen him do for the, over the last hour or so comes back out as far as OK and OK and it's block down there but Derry just get the rub of the green there and manages to go back to them again back as far as Downey now Downey plays it outside and Derry again working it through the angles working it on there good ball up the line there and they still hold on to it it's Rachel McAllister now who has it Rachel on the ball there she's been closed down which managed to play it back outside the shot coming in from outside on one leg as that was struck and it struck accurately over the bar the umpires were slow we were all a little bit confused here but it has gone over the bar and Derry do really well with that one and just knocks themselves another point to the good. And it's Hannah Scott now who has it. Hannah plays that down the line. Kilkenny one on one inside there. And it's a Kilkenny player who has it. Charging forward, attacking up to the edge of the 21. Oh, high tackle coming in there. The referee did not like that. The Derry player felt it no other choice. Only bring her down just shy of the 21. And there was a big tackle coming in there. The referee is definitely going to have a word there with a few players. As the Kilkenny player is down receiving a bit of attention, so too is the Derry player. Neither team came out of that looking too well. Oh, it was a big, yeah, it was a cl- big clash there came in. Both teams getting tired now. They've been playing for well over that hour. It's a hot, muggy day here in FBD Semple Stadium. And this is an All-Ireland semi-final at the end of the day. It's all about winning semi-finals. And is it... And is it going to be a yellow card? It's going to be a chance for Claire Doheny. Dotsy, as she's known locally down in Kilkenny, has a chance here just outside the 21. Kilkenny do need a score. It's 17-11 at the moment. They need to bring this back. They don't have a huge amount of time. Here she goes. She's been pretty good on the free so far today. And there she goes again. That's her second so 17-12 now is the score here with what 8 minutes to play here in the second period of extra time the winner of course gets to play in that all Ireland final in August 6th of August that's scheduled for triple header of course in Croke Park dropping now again couple of hands go for that where's it going to land it's going to land down in favour of Feeling. Feeling just can't get it up there he aren't letting her away with McAllister again Anya McAllister plays that back outside the ball is half blocked it's still there Roisin Feeling now has a Roisin Feeling doesn't manage to pick it up it's Laura Green now Green is in there involved in that one as well it's still there over there Donny now Donny doesn't get it either it's still been fought for it's still there right up against the sideline there four, five, six players in on top of this no one has managed to gain clean possession of it I think the referee has said oh no he's given a f- what has he given now he's waving his hand not quite sure I think he's saying a substitution he wanted that to happen an unusual thing to see after a whistle is blown but he was letting us know that Terry were out to introduce number 25 Shannon O'Connor so number 25 Shannon is into the fray for the last what have we got the last 8 minutes or so and it looks like number 10 is that Moraine McNichol is going to be replaced Maria put in a huge performance, especially in that first half of extra time. Gave it her all. It's coming off the field now with seven to play. Who's going to win this one? Derry have it. It looks like it's McAllister again. McAllister's half blocked. A really important block. And now Kilkenny have an attacking line ball just between the 45 and the 65. They'll be trying to get... They need a big score from this. They'll be hoping to nearly even get a goal. But they're five points down. They have six and a half minutes to play in this all earned semi-final. They want to get back there. They want to make amends for the 2021 final. They lost to Antrim. That's knocked inside. Oh, just wasn't controlled there by Caroline Kennedy. It's stopped just on the line, which doesn't help the Derry defence. Have they lost the ball? Kilkenny look like they may have had it there for a second it's still there and what has the referee decided a trip I think is what the referee has decided it's going to be a free in a free in to Kilkenny and it's a dangerous one it's right on the line do you go for a goal here do you put it over and hope you get another couple of pints that must be going through it's going to be Donny I think again who's going to take this one potentially do you do you go for the goal do you go for the point I think the point is probably going to be the most likely outcome here an easy enough one right there on the 21 an easy enough score and Kilkenny just keep things tipping away tip, make things nice and nervous for their fans for the Derry supporters as that one is struck over the crossbar and what are we at 17-13 now that's just four 
we saw a four points lead even in the first half or the second half of this game was eroded pretty quickly as Derry take another long puck out it's dropping there around the 45 who's going to win this one it doesn't look like it's it's going to be Derry they're going to come out with this one good strong running there for Hull Hull plays that back outside he's trying to play it into a bit of space doesn't manage to get that to the intended target it's still there though Derry look like they have it now through O'Kane O'Kane still has it O'Kane plays that down the line. It's going to be taken, turned inside. Good work from Derry right up against the 21. Support inside, good hand pass inside. Now things are opening up. A chance for Derry. Bear down and goals. Oh, it looked to be battered into the net. It hasn't been managed to get a clean connection. That It's still there. Still been fought for. It comes out. Derry still in possession of the ball. Working good hand pass. Out to McAllister. On you, McAllister. Miss reliable all day long. Put it out to her. The angle wasn't easy, but she made it look very easy. As she struck that over the bar. Another fine score for her. And that may guarantee her side a spot in this all Ireland final 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 6 points I have down for, for today's game and she's been involved in absolutely everything great performance from her as we have 4.5 minutes left 18 points to 13 just 5 in this one that one is coming down hard again around the 45 Derry seem to have possession of the ball a big tackle coming in there and a free out is going to be the reward there from a Derry perspective they have a free on the far side of the field the breeze is starting to kick up a small bit as you can see from the white flag there on the far side of the field but that'll all suit, it should suit Kilkenny, but will they get a chance? Will they get another opportunity to go on the attack? They are currently down by five, with about four minutes left of this second half of extra time. Now we will have a little bit of time added on due to this stoppage here. And there's a yellow card coming over there on the far side of the field from a Kilkenny perspective. It's probably not going to make a big difference in the long term. So a Kilkenny yellow card there for Claire, Claire Dohany who scored the last three as well of course so clear on a yellow card will have to be careful so Derry go again they want to get the insurance score if they haven't already got it they want to get another one Kilkenny he's trying to stop them do that good runners off the shoulder still Derry on the attack around the 45 three or four players on the ball knock the ball inside good pass great take on the run there is support inside she doesn't need it she goes all the way in she takes the shot and that feels like you can even feel the enthusiasm here in this stadium that feels like the insurance score Knocked over the crossbar. And Derry now, look over that score. We're 13 points to 19. And that's all they're probably going to need here today. You would imagine. As there's about three minutes still left in this game. But look at that score. We're 13 points to 19. It's six points. It's two goals. And Derry really in the driving seat at the moment. So a throw ball here in between the 45 and the 65. Kilkenny fight for it. But it looks like it's Derry going to come out with it. Hand on the back there. The referee says, oh, there's a, a trip or a... Either way, it's going to be a free, a free to Derry. And McAllister is going to take this one. So two and a half minutes left, or thereabouts. I think there's going to be another change there for Kilkenny. Daniel Quigley, who came off, is maybe going to come on if there's a chance for her. As that one is played down into the corner. But there might again be a chance there. Derry are working hard on that one. Again, it looks like it might be in Hull. is inside there fighting for this one. Comes back outside. There is support. God, Derry still full of running. The shot coming in. Oh, brilliant block there. Just didn't manage to get any purchase on it there. It was Emer Doherty trying to take the shot off there. She was half blocked. The ball is still going to bounce down. Derry come away again now to O'Kane. O'Kane, big tackle coming in there again. Turned over there. Brilliantly turned over by Barco. Barco plays that down the line. Inside. Fighting for this again. Inside there. Looks like who's inside there? Only Kennedy. Kennedy doesn't manage to get it though. She's lost her footing. She's gone to ground. Over there is Dahani. Now Dahani has it. She's lost it. Derry have it again here. What have we got? Two minutes left. And Derry have the ball. They're six points up. Still going strong here. Working it over and back. Runners off the shoulder. McAllister has it again. McAllister plays it forward. Derry have it. There's oceans of space here that they can work. Runners off the shoulder. Runners left and right. Plays the ball inside. In as far as McGill. I think it is. She has the ball. She turns. She shoots. And she scores. And we can see PJ O'Mullen, the Derry manager here in front of us. He has his hands in the air. He knows that is that. With what, 90 seconds or so is all to play. That one was struck over the bar. And that should be that from a Derry perspective. They have secured their place, you would imagine. Besides a huge upset in the last 90 seconds or so. But we will stick with the play because who knows what can happen. Derry are about to introduce Emer McCluskey. Emer McCluskey, number 19, coming into the field for the last minute or so. And she'll be delighted to get to play out here in FBD Semble Stadium and see what she can do to maybe stake a claim for us place in the final. 
that puck will go straight for her. She puts in a big tackle, does McCluskey. The referee says it was overzealous, though. And it is going to be a free. And it's a free in for Kilkenny. They will imagine they'll drop in around the house. It's quickly taken. It's knocked in there towards, Kilken- towards Kennedy, I should say. But there's too much on it and it goes out of play. And now we've about 35 seconds left. And Derry are about to make another introduction of a substitute. Maybe that isn't going to happen just yet. And we are going to pause there as it looks like they're about to make another change. Doherty. That's dropping, dropping again between the 265s. Who's on to that? Kilkenny again trying to work hard over the far side of the field through feeling. Still there on the ground. Kilkenny have it now. Kilkenny are working it out, working it out up the field. There is support. They need a goal from this attack. They badly need a goal. We've just hit the 20-minute mark. Now they have possession. Now they have the ball. Kennedy's inside for calling it. Quigley tried to get onto that. Quigley couldn't turn quick enough. Kilkenny still have it. Oh, another brilliant Hurley goes in there for McAllister. Goes back outside. Kilkenny have it. Trying to work the angles. Trying to work something in from here. Over and back. Holding on to possession. Is there a shot going to eventually come in? Oh, and it's gone over the bar. But it's probably too little, too late from a Kilkenny perspective. They managed to work something from that inside. And it is a score, but it is probably not going to be enough. As we have gone over the 20 minute mark, 20 minutes and 30 seconds played. Neve Gribbon has the ball in her hands. The referee has, well he's just taking the whistle out of his mouth. He's looking around, I think he's giving a signal there. There may be another minute left or so, you'd imagine. If you're just joining us late and wondering why we're not building up to the Mead, West Mead game just yet. This one has gone to extra time. And that game, Mead West Mead will now throw in at half three. Another good long puck out on this one. It's dropping. Again, oh, Derry player had that in their hand and it turned around and seemed to lose it. Now it's broken kindly. Kilkenny have a chance here. They need to get at least a goal from this movement and hope the ball is played out again for another attack. And here they go on the attack, still juggling around there. Derry holding on to this one, heading towards the side and half a hook comes in there and the ball is going to win the race. No, it's not. It's going to come out to Hannah Scott. Hannah has it now. Derry players coming in top of her. Hannah loses possession, but she gets it back again, still fighting hard. Quigley is in there as well. Daniel Quigley of Kilkenny trying to come out with her outcomes. There, O'Kane. Dervla O'Kane plays it up the line. She's trying to play it inside. But there are too many Kilkenny players in there. And they do well. They haven't given up on this just yet. We've played 90 seconds of added time in this extra time. But it's Derry who have the ball. Derry have it through Hull again. Hull plays that back outside to McAllister. McAllister has been the hero all day for Derry. Can she be the one to get the final score? Still McAllister up to the edge of the D. McAllister takes it on herself. McAllister takes the shot. And McAllister gets her score. And that should be that. As McAllister knocks over another fine score after a great run. A really relieving run. And when she puts it over the bar, it makes things much easier. 21 points to 14. And that is that. Derry have secured their spot in the All-Ireland Intermediate Final on the first weekend of August. They go through now. They'll have to wait who they will play. Will it be Mead? Will it be West Mead? It doesn't matter to to them right now. What an epic battle we had here. Kilkenny put her up to them every step of the way. But it's Derry who come out on top. 21 points to 14. Fantastic result for them. And just looking down, we had so many contenders for player of the match on both sides. With Laura Green and Kilkenny, Hannah Scott put in a big performance. Emma Nogue, when she was on the field, huge performance there across the board. From a Derry perspective, McNichol, especially in that second half of extra, or first half of extra time. Aoife Shaw was on her inning with the freeze. Back in the defence, Nikasig swept up, especially in the first half of normal time. But the player of the match is Anya McAllister and her last point there at the end of the game really put the copper fast on that she was absolutely brilliant One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven points I had for her today she could even have got more but a great performance from her we're going to try and go down and get a word with her in a couple of minutes time so if you could bear with us have a look at the best bits of that epic encounter but the full time score here Derry 21 points Ken- Kilkenny 14 points and we'll be back with you shortly with a word from the player of the match Anya McAllister
Delighted to be joined by the Derry player of the match, Anya McAllister. Anya, how did you feel after that epic win? Tired, <laughs> but absolutely delighted. It was definitely nail-biting at times there. We sort of fell asleep at times, but we definitely redeemed ourselves there in extra time. Really, really just put the hard work in and it paid off in the end. Did you ever feel it was getting away from you? Like towards the end of the 60 minutes, it looked like Kenny had gotten top. Uh, towards the end of the second half there, they definitely had the momentum. We maybe um, sort of took for granted the four to five point lead that we did have and sort of fell asleep a bit. Um, but we're just lucky to have had Aoife Shaw do that equal- equaliser. So then we did get the chance to come back into extra time. And I think it showed in the beginning of the two halves in extra time, the fight that there was still left in us, that there was definitely more more in the tank. Yeah, absolutely. But the start of that first period of extra time, you came flying out. Yeah. What was said to you at half time to made you, or not at half time, at full time, to perform like that? I mean, I suppose everything that had happened last year. We were here, this is the exact same stage last year, all in semi final against Cork, and it went to extra time, or, or sorry, injury time, and we ended up getting beat by a point. So, a lot of the girls who were on the panel last year understand that hurt, and we've sort of been using that as motivation and a way to drive us forward. Um, the girls just want it for each other, and that's, that's really what was getting us coming out and playing better and putting, putting us up to that extra gear, I suppose. <laughs> Two weeks now to the All Ireland final, and you'll be playing one of the Mead or West Mead. How are you feeling about that one? Yeah, excited, but obviously it's going to be another really tough challenge. Two fantastic teams. We've been up against them in the league and in previous years, so we know a bit of what they're about. But you can't be complacent. You can't you can't um, just expect things to go the way they have gone in previous years. So we just have to focus on ourselves, focus on our game play, look at look at our video analysis, say things that maybe didn't go so well for us, and try and limit the mistakes that we do and increase the chances and the scoring conversions of them scores so that's that's the aim <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully we'll come away with an all earning because that's what that's what we're going for but well, best of luck two exciting weeks ahead in Derry thanks very much for talking to us we're going to take a quick pause we'll have full coverage of the second semi-final very shortly
Welcome back. If you're joining us for the second of today's double bill, if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome along. FBD Semble Stadium. You missed an absolute cracking first intermediate semi final. Derry and Kilkenny went to extra time with Derry eventually winning out. So they are sitting pretty now in the All Ireland intermediate final. They will just see who they're going to be playing next by who wins today's game Mead against Westmead was meant to you in at 3 o'clock but due to that extra time it'll be half 3 now when it throws in before we go any further we'll have a quick look at both starting 15 teams Mead are as per programme so we'll quickly run through that number 1 and in goals Tara Murphy full back line 2 Rachel O'Neill 3 Claire Coffey and 4 Sophia Payne their half back line is 5 Tracy King 6 Maeve Clintz 7 Leah Devine their midfield then is Grace Coleman and Aoife Minogue and into their forwards is 10 Amy Gaffney 11 Abby Donnelly and 12 Olivia O'Halloran and their forward to number 13 Kira Foley 14 Ellen Bark who is the team captain and number 15 Emma O'Connell Westmead, they have one change that we'll get to in a minute. But in goals, they have number one, Fiona Keating. She's the giant captain. Two is Karen Gaffney. Three is Julie McLaughlin. And four is Emily McCabe. Their half back line is number five, Eva Doherty. Six, Murn Scally. And seven, Eva O'Malley. Their midfield is made up of number eight, Laura Doherty. And number nine, Quiva McCrossan. And their half forward line looks like number 10, Sheila McGrath. 11, Megan Dowdle, the other joint captain. And 12, Hannah Core. Their full forward line there is where there's one change. Number 13, Maria Kelly, is as per programme. But number 14, Amelia Shaw, is out. And number 19, Elaine Finn, is in her place. So 19, Elaine Finn, is in for number 14, Amelia Shaw. And number 15, Denise McGrath, make up your starting 15. So they're both teams. Mead, I guess, against Westmead, as we say, rescheduled for half three. These two teams know each other pretty well. They both played in the league. Westmead lost to Mead in the league, but then went out and beat them in the championship in their last game out, which was a little over a month ago. That game finished 4-11 to 2-7, which is interesting. So in the early part of the year, Mead won. The later part of the year, Westmead won. How much that bearing will have on today's game be interesting to see a local derby, of course. Most times form goes out the window. Westmead are missing... Well, they're welcoming back, actually, a couple of players but her injuries are cornerback Jade McHugh she's sprained ligaments in her ankle and Dervlin with Lachlan who has torn ACL as well as Chloe Ruanan Ruan even the three of them are all missing from today's game me going to this one they've told us with a clean bill of health so they'll be expecting good things from their players me they lost last year's All-Ireland semi-final to Galway this is their fourth All Ireland semi final in a row, having lost to Down, Kilkenny, and Galway. So we'll be hoping to go that final step today to lose four semi finals in a row. It'll be fairly heartbreaking. Both teams going to try and get a step in the final on the 6th of August in Crow Park. Westmead, All Ireland intermediate title. They have won. It came back in 2019. They've also two All Ireland juniors from 2012 and 2017. From an honours point of view, Mead won the All Ireland junior title twice in 2008 and 2012, and the All Ireland intermediate title once in 2017 after a replay. We're now going to pause for minute silence. going to go straight in now to Ronavine.
so we're nearly ready to go here for the second intermediate semi-final Mead against Westmead just the one change as I mentioned Elaine Finn in place of Amelia Shaw at full forward for Westmead so the ball is about to be thrown in players getting I suppose going through their far, for, final formalities two midfielders just shaking hands there they know each other very well as I mentioned it's their third time playing this year played once in the league once in the championship Westmead have had a longer break, haven't gotten straight to today's game. Mead had to play Cork the last day out in the quarter final. They beat them by two goals the last day out. They beat them 3 11 to 1 11. And the ball is in and the game is on. Westmead go on the attack straight away. Now into the side, down into the corner here near us in the commentary position. As that one's led to over, Westmead looked to have the advantage here as they pick up the ball there. Going inside there was a foul came in there as Kelly tried to go bear down on goal she was taken out of it the referee had an easy decision to make and it's going to be a free very early days for Westmead and a chance for them to go into the lead looked like Leah Devine brought down Maria Kelly there and now a chance for Megan Dowdle the joint captain of Westmead to put her side into an early lead inside the first minute here in FBD Semple Stadium she looked pretty decent with that one too as she knocks that straight over the bar and a good start to Westmead and they've brought a decent amount of crowd here with them you can hear them screaming even from up here in the commentary position but Westmead are up and going Westmead of course managed by Dermot Cahill a Tipperary native the son of Dinny Cahill the ex-Antrim manager it's his second year in charge was also involved with Kildare back in the day won a Christy ring with them under Joe Quaid so he brings that credentials to it Brendan Skeehan is the Mead manager and it's Mead now who are trying to do something it's Mead as I meant to just go back to Brendan for a second, he's been in charge since 2020 and he won a Leinster Intermediate back in 2022. So both managers have a string of credentials to their name as the ball is left inside and Mead looked to be on the attack but good defender back there by West Mead and Karen Gaffney picks that one. Karen is also the PRO so she's double jobbing and a busy woman all the time as she lets that one down. The ball has actually stayed in play. That was touch and go for a second and Mead managed to turn and drive that back down inside where there is plenty of space here if it can be exploited but hasn't happened just yet Mead have a couple of numbers over there they'll be hoping to run into that space and get it up and now they have it and they're driving forward out here good running there towards Foley it was Foley who has the ball Foley she was going backwards as she struck that but it didn't seem to affect her as she managed to get down high and accurate and over the crossbar and Kira Foley opens the scoring for Mead one point apiece two minutes gone Kira just got into a bit of space there went away from goals to make the angle a little bit easier for herself and then struck it very well over the bar so there's a Mead player down on the far side of the field. So why we're paused for a couple of seconds, far side of the field. The wind is more or less died down as well here. You can see maybe any bit that's there is swirling around and very hard to judge. Are we going left? Are we going right? At the moment it seems to be going in favour of West Mead, but it is changing by the second almost. And we're up and ready to go again here. No major issues there injury-wise. I think we're ready to get going again. The ball is currently in the hands of Fiona Keating of Westmead. She won All Ireland Junior back in 2017 and she drives that one long. It's bouncing. It's going to be picked up by Westmead and they're on the attack here over the 45. Plenty of players out to support her if she can get the ball up and eventually McGrath does get it. McGrath has it but she runs into a Mead wall. She's trying to get her on the second attempt. Still working hard for that. Finn is in there as well. Elaine Finn trying to get that one up from a Westmead perspective. Is it going to come out? It's not just yet. It's still there. We saw plenty of these rocks in the first game. Saw a few more here now. Finn tried to play that hand pass out but it's not going to come out and that looks like there's going to is that well picked up by McGrath I think it is that 10 looks more like a 30 from out here but I presume that is McGrath we are not told there was another 30 playing but Westmead still on the ball just lost it there McGrath seemed to lose her footing she goes to ground still being fought for again to nail the early stages of this game now Westmead have it running out there from Dowdle Dowdle plays that one in over the top it's 2-on-2 two two inside Westmead have the advantage here it's bouncing through there but Murphy and Mead goal does well she's out now though and the ball is still there to be won it looks like Mead just have enough numbers back there Tara Murphy did really well in the Mead goal to come out make herself a bit of a nuisance and spread the ball away Westmead now looks to be back in possession of this one they picked it up through O'Malley O'Malley tries to go down on that Doherty also involved in that one but it's Mead who are trying to come out as well still there and Mead now have it through O'Halloran O'Halloran she rides the tackle there and now she's going she's up and running she's running forwards she's looking for some support inside is she going to get it O'Halloran plays delicate ball inside oh the ball just isn't controlled and it's going to be picked up by Eva O'Malley Eva O'Malley took a big tackle there from Donnelly she goes to the ground but I think she still has possession yes she does O'Malley the pass was a bit too high though and puts her defender back in a bit of trouble but it's well recovered there by Scally and she clears that down to a bit of space down here but the ball goes out out of play and it's going to be a line ball to Mead 
so early exchanges here come four and a half minutes one point apiece game yet really to break into a bit of a flow just yet but early stages as it's Devine now on this one Leah Devine and Afina player puts that up the line again it's pretty tight and it's hit straight back out of play the ball only went about 10 or 15 feet and then it was hit back out it's going to be taken now by Ellen Burke the Mead captain she goes back as far as Devine but I think Devine a big tackle came in there from Ellen Flynn Elaine Flynn I should say and Elaine does well to just stop that going any further forward and now who has picked it up it's back in favour of me to drive forward here through Minogue Aoife Minogue going forward here up to the 45 still Minogue still going strong she has the advantage if she wants it but she doesn't need it up to the 14 Minogue plays it inside put across oh wasn't finished oh two players went for that one as it went high across the goals neither of them managed to just get that vital touch and knock it home brilliant run from Minogue she went all the way out must have went 20-30 yards had the advantage didn't need it played it inside it was just too high for the on running oh, it really did not fall too kindly for Emma O'Connell she managed to get a connection on it but maybe it was a slightly wide and when she did make the connection just maybe helped it on wide but the angle was too tough at that stage and it's Mead now who are back defending and they need to win the ball here they need to try and take it up but Mead still have managed to turn that over over there through O'Neill Rachel O'Neill clears that but only 10 or 15 yards oh, the hand pass isn't brilliant but they managed to find another girl in green and yellow till it's eventually cleared by Devine then Devine plays that one down oh well picked up on the run on the spin and Mead are looking good as they come forward here there's players call for this left and right but I don't think there's going to be a pass coming here as that one is struck she celebrates as she struck that I think it was Emma O'Connell who eventually managed to get the last touch on that she flew down the line managed to turn and put it over the bar really good play for me they really show pace and speed when they do manage to get the ball there and there was no doubt she wasn't passing that one wants to open her account for the day batted back down across over there as far as McCross and McCross and then plays that in oh it's well read there and Mead do look pretty sharp at the back on this particular occasion anyway that one is played across trying to get it across as far as McCross and she doesn't manage to get it on this occasion Again, this local derby, you're going to have this, you're going to have this bit of niggle, Aoife Minogue involved in that one as well, it's booted clear in the end, booted out there as far as Devine now, she picks it up and hand passes that one forward and Mead now go again, looking around, comes across the field, in there as far as Donnelly, Donnelly doesn't control that the first time, she won't get a second chance as West Mead are too lively at the moment, fighting, pushing and shoving and kicking and everything, the ball is still there, I think Colin McAllister, the match referee is going to have to make a decision here and his decision is to let this play on, let it sort out themselves and that's exactly what happens and it's Eve O'Malley who clears that one out from her Harney she clears that down the line but there's no player there in a maroon jersey and it's easy for me to clear and it's going to be Clintz who has that she plays up the line to Devine again Devine doesn't control that the first time it's back to Clintz again here goes May but she gives that up the line her hand pass a little bit too strong and it's going to be cut out and a chance for Westmead to put this back down into the attacking zone there's not too many Westmead players down there. there's two Mead but it's going to drop down as far as McGrath Denise McGrath though was outnumbered there and it's Rachel O'Neill who comes away with this far Mead and she plays that diagonally across the field out comes Donnelly again Donnelly is on this she plays that down she's trying to play it into Coleman Grace Coleman has it now Grace has a runner outside her. doesn't need her plays that ball inside that's well read well picked up there and Westmead managed to sniff out the danger here as they come out of their own full back line still going strong good running there from Eva O'Malley she played that down the line nicely batted down to her colleague there but just doesn't manage to control it looks like it's Kelly who has it there she feet oh it's well read brilliantly intercepted here goes Minogue again Minogue who's been the standout player in the opening 8 minutes or so she got onto that showed real confidence tenacity and overall ability to just grab that one run forward and strike it over the bar really good score from Emma Minogue she got 1-5 the last day out against Cork and she started here well as well 8 minutes or so gone as the rain which has been threatening for the last half an hour, so we can start to hear it over. The roof of the stand hasn't affected the game just yet, and let's hope it stays away to some extent. It is falling, but only a little bit at the moment, so let's hope it stays that way. It's going to be gobbled up there by Coffee, Claire Coffee. She was under pressure, though, and dropped it, but still, Mead have the numbers back there. Back to Coffee again. Coffee thought about hitting that, and then said, I'll just give this a big, huge hand pass, handball style almost, and it worked out from a Mead perspective. It was played up the line then. Out comes O'Connell, who got the point earlier a few minutes ago. She gave a big fist pump after it. She's trying to get into it again. She wants to get another point. She wants to do another fist pump, but she hasn't managed to get the ball out here. She fouled her player, and it's going to be a free against her, a free to West Mead, just outside the 45. And Wern Scally is going to take this. We're in part of that All Ireland winning intermediate team back in 19. Former captain of the team as well, of course. Her sister Roshi is also on the panel. So here goes Wern. 
coming up on 10 minutes he's put that down into a bit of space but Claire Coffey is reading that all day long but Claire is under pressure there as a cross Cram core she tried to slow it down and tried to stop the clearance and it kind of worked to some extent as Westmead have managed to turn this over tried to play that across well blocked there again good work been done by Westmead in the far side of the field it goes back across brilliant hook coming there at the last minute that was heading between the posts but Hurley came in there at the last minute and it's gone out for a line ball a line ball to Westmead just on the 21 on the far side of the field Lively opening here. First 10 minutes. Good standard of Camogie. Delighted to be able to bring it to you here on the Camogie Association live stream on YouTube. So Westmead go with this line ball. Plenty of height on that one. It's going to cause problems if it falls the right way. And Westmead managed to work this out. Shot from the edge of the D coming in there from McGrath. McGrath, we heard the clash, but it doesn't matter because that's gone over the bar. Sheila does really well. Sheila came back outside onto her left. Managed to scoop that over the crossbar. She actually got one point in the intermediate all her in the final back in 19 and now she has one today Tara Murphy Tara with the clearance maybe not as long as she would have liked it seemed to not come off the right part of her hurley judging by the sound of Westmead have managed to take the possession of that ball I was trying to go across again to McGrath didn't manage to get to McGrath we see a pull going in there by Finn Finn didn't manage to get a connection on the ball but she made her Self known in around the house there as this one is dropping now. Again, McAllister is having a look at this. The match referee deciding will I let it go on? And he has let it go on. And now comes Core with this one. Core got 3 1 against Mead in the group stages. So she knows how to find an end and loves playing against Mead as the West Mead player. Now it's going to come back out again. Coleman was there. Coleman has it. Mead have it. More importantly, as they come up the line, that one isn't brilliantly struck. It's going to drop between the 265. Mead working hard to try to get something onto this. Donnelly is in there for me, but Westmead have turned it over. And again, it's going back down this near side of the field. A couple of players go for that, but it's a Westmead player who comes down with it. That Westmead player is McGrath. McGrath looking for number two for herself for the day. Has that just about come in? It wasn't the easiest of angles, but she manages to convert it with ease. Sheila McGrath, number two for her. And she doesn't need to be asked twice. Seemed to be much more comfortable there striking on her right-hand side than her previous point that came from her left. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we're all square, 11 and a half minutes gone. That one is going to bounce and drop. Who's going to bounce and drop? It's going to bounce to a mead player and they're away now again. They have real pace when they pick it up around that half forward midfield line. Driving forward, bearing down a goal. Again mead, there is support but she's going to take it all on her own. The shot coming in is low. It's still around there. Is it going to be pulled in it? No, it's not. West Mead seemed to have done enough to stop that. Advancing any further. Plenty of players in around that. But it's going to be O'Malley who has it now. Eve O'Malley still on the ball. A high tackle there. The referee says that is a foul. But play on. You have the advantage. And that is what Westmead are doing at the moment. He still has his hand up for the advantage. Now the five seconds is over. He puts it down. Westmead still hold on to the ball. And it is cleared out. But it's going to go again to Mead. It goes over there as far as Tracy King. King puts that up the line. So trying to get into Coleman. But I think there's going to be too much on that for Coleman. And Westmead hold on to it. Just inside the playing field as that one is pulled nice but on the hop almost awfully 94 style the way that was pulled on down the line Westmead have picked it up now again but again as always there's pressure on every player who picks up the ball in this game so far that one is pulled again it's pulled up there as far as Donnelly Abby Donnelly is in a bit of space now for a change there is a bit of space in that field if it can be found Abby Donnelly has found it but now she's been shut down and she loses the ball almost took too much out of it Emma O'Connell has it now Emma Goes back outside as far as Devine. Devine plays that inside. Oh, good ball. Found his player. Found Donnelly. Donnelly brilliantly blocked down. Mead have it again. They're not getting that in their own way out there at the moment. That one is coming from way downtown. It's going to drop in. Oh, it's still there. Can it be finished? It's not cleared yet. It's still there. It's still in play. Westmead have done enough. It looks like they've done just about enough. Kira Foley was in underneath that for Mead. Hopefully he had a touch on it. But between Fiona Keating and her defence back there, Westmead did enough to stop that one trickling into the back of the net. And the score remains three points apiece as we approach the halfway point of this first half. So Devine thought about taking that line ball for Mead, but it's going to be left to Aoife Minogue. Aoife has already scored a point today. Also, of course, a member of the Mead ladies football panel. They were knocked out of the championship last weekend or the weekend before, though, so she can fully concentrate on the camogie at present. So here goes Aoife looking around looking for some runners nothing super obvious for her at the moment she goes short she finds a player though, almost by accident but she finds a player that's the main thing and the ball takes a couple of deflections and goes out of play yet again and Aoife Minogue has maybe advanced six or seven yards and has another line ball there's a few pockets of space if she goes diagonally across the field to the far corner there might be something there for her down the near corner as well there is a bit of space not too many mead players in either of those pockets though so where is she going to go Minogue goes relatively short it nearly worked out again but this time it doesn't it's gone to McCrossan of Westmead 
And that's going to bounce, but it's going to be gathered up there. There's two mead players there. It's going to come as far as Divine now. She has it again. Now she's going far. Up to the 45. Still Divine on the ball. Divine thinking about her score. Doesn't make the connection she would have liked there. It's going to drop, though. It's going to drop in favour of Mead, though. Is it still there? Good defending there from Westmead. The ball hasn't been cleared. It's still on the ground. It's going to come back. Good diving effort. And a save there by the Westmead goalkeeper there. Keating, but it's not cleared yet. And eventually it is, though, helped on. Keating was brave in the West Mead goal. Came out slid in her knees just to make herself a bit bigger. Make it harder for the Mead players to get a little touch on that and knock it into the net. But at the end of the day, nothing comes of it. And West Mead get themselves a free out and a chance to maybe catch their breath and go again. Because Mead have been on top of them for the last couple of minutes. Again, a couple of players, it is a very warm, close day here, so a couple of players taking advantage of the stoppage to get a bit of water on board. And it's going to be Fiona Keating again. So there's Fiona plays that one down the far side of the field. Bounces, but it's going to bounce straight into the hands there of Minogue again. Minogue's been up and down the field all today already. That was into a bit of space, and me, they're going to exploit that. They have enough players over there. How do they manage to get it? And on top of that was O'Connell. But O'Connell doesn't get a really good defender from a Westmead perspective. And that's cleared down the line by McCrossin. McCrossin didn't really put a huge amount of effort into where that was going. I think she just wanted to get it clear. But it's worked out in her favour as a Mead player. And has gone out for a line ball on the far side of the field. And now gives Westmead a chance to launch an attack. Their forwards have been starred with possession for the last five or six minutes. That one isn't the best line ball in the world. But it might work out from her perspective. Where is it going to go? Westmead have it now. They have a couple of numbers, but it's been turned back over there. Looks like Divine from Mead is over there as well. Still been fought for a Mead. Have come out of that. Sophia Payne was trying to put in a big clearance there. She was blocked. But she has won her side a line ball on the far side of the field. Just inside the 45. As the rain is definitely getting a little bit heavier now, which will affect play, you would imagine. Pitch still looking resplendent though here. Continuing this is the second match of the day. Tipperary Senior Hurling Championship starts down here next weekend so this pitch will get plenty of use over the next couple of weeks Mead now pick up the ball good hand pass outside oh not the best well it wasn't a bad pass just the slippy conditions very hard to get your hand on that now now Westmead have a good turn inside now there's a chance for McGrath looking for number 3 for the day McGrath doesn't need to be asked twice you just can't give her the time and space that they have been affording her to date Sheila McGrath went one way then the other got it on to her left struck it over number 3 for her She's playing around that half forward position, but she's drifting in and out, picking up the ball in pockets of space and then punishing the Mead defence. 4 3 in favour of West Mead. Big clearance there by Tara Murphy. Who's underneath that one? Looks like Scally was doing her best, but Scally hasn't managed. Donnelly now has it. Donnelly plays that back outside, and a shot is coming in from Gaffney. Amy Gaffney, Amy Gaffney responds instantly. If one number 10 can do it, she says, so can I. The two number 10s now have scored in the last 40 seconds or so. It's the Mead version who got that one, Amy Gaffney. So, level pegging still here, four apiece. Nothing separating these sides, as we kind of expected going into it, despite when they last met. It was a 10-point win for West Mead but when they met before that then it was a Mead win so really as we said before these derbies everything form wise goes out the window that's come across the field West Mead look to be they're not going to make this one just about it's good strong running there but it's not too easy picked up Sheila McGrath was trying to get onto that one the ball just won the race and now it's a chance for Claire Coffey to take the line ball inside her own 45 Claire a three time soaring star winner 2012, 2017 and 2020. That one isn't... It's, it's gone out of play, up the line. She was maybe expecting a runner. The runner never came. McCrossin plays a short one inside. She's looking for the return. She doesn't get the return. The ball went a fair distance of variance from the hand pass and it's eventually cleared down by O'Malley. O'Malley is... Ball doesn't go accurately and Mead managed to turn that one over. Now Mead have it again, working the ball through the lines. Nice tight hand passing. And it's Minogue who clears that one over her head, but she clears it straight out of play for a line ball, a line ball to West Mead that Cueva McCrossin is going to take. Cueva was told you need to come a little bit further forward, which she gleefully accepts the invitation. Just trying to tee up the ball here, try and find someone. 
Oh, that is a decent cut, but it doesn't manage to stick. And it's right back in the hands of Ellen Burke of Mead. Burke gives it now as far as Sophia Payne. Sophia gives and goes. She's looking for the return. It just didn't stick in the hands of O'Halloran. O'Halloran now has a chance to go across the field. And that's going to be well taken out of the sky. And it just builds on that. There was a tug on the jersey there on Coleman. But the referee says, you have the advantage. Play it on. It's in as far as Gaffney now. Gaffney has it. She looks up. She doesn't want to do anything else with that. Only take the shot on. She had a few options. She decided to take on herself, but it goes to the right and wide. A few of the inside forwards would be getting on to her if she does that too many more times, you would imagine. But at the moment, four points apiece. Coming up on 20 minutes gone. This game's really still on a nice edge. Neither team really fully dominant. But look at this, Sheila McGrath, who's been very dominant. Anytime she gets the ball, she's up to the 45. She's looking for number four for the day. Still Sheila. Oh, nice sidestep. But she's taken out of it there. Maeve Clint felt she had no choice, I think. Sheila was going in for number four, as we mentioned. Maeve more or less stood her up, then stuck out her leg, I think, just to bring her down. But Sheila McGrath has been dangerous. She picked the ball up there a long, long way from goals, but was shortening the distance with every step and eventually was brought down. And it is going to be a free in now. Just to give you an update on the senior Camogie semi final. It's Tipperary 1 7. It's Wall for three points after 20 minutes. Just to keep you up to date on that. And of course, this one, four points apiece. And if you're joining us late, Derry came through and won the first intermediate semi final. They won that after extra time. And if you want to even go back a bit further than that, Tipperary junior Camogie players also won their All Ireland semi final. So the Tip seniors will be hoping to try and make it a double there for the Premier County. As we're still paused here as Sheila McGrath gets a bit of attention and that last thing the Westmead players and management and supporters want to see her down and hopefully she will be okay to play on. She seems to be rising a small bit so hopefully all is good there as the rest of the players again as we mentioned taking on a bit of liquid maybe getting a few more instructions just plenty of backroom team on the field from both sides and Colin McAllister is moving in which gives us the impression that we're nearly ready to go again. We're getting some of that magic spray over there to Sheila McGrath and then we hope that'll keep her going to at least half time. This is quickly taken there by Dowdle. Megan Dowdle takes that one almost standing over poor Sheila McGrath. But it didn't affect either of them as Dowdle put that over the bar for her second of the day. Both coming from freeze. <laughs> Tara Murphy now bouncing the ball on the stick. She comes out to the edge of her square and then drives it down. It may drop favourably for a mid player but it doesn't bat it out of play. And out for a line ball. Going to be taken by Ellen Burke again. Who despite having 14 on her back. Is definitely playing more around the midfield area. Definitely in that middle third. Up the line a small. Westmead have cut that one out. They've cut it out there. Through Donnelly. Donnelly still going forward now. In fact that's Megan Dowdle I should say. Dowdle did well there. But her butt was turned over. And it goes back as far as Devine. Oh. The referee saw something or heard something he didn't like. Either way it's going to be a free. And the Devine is down. I think there might have been a late slap came in there. It was a bit high as well, I think he said. So it looks like Maria Kelly is going to get a yellow card for herself. And she'll have to be careful for the rest of the day. And thankfully, Devine is up and will be able to play on it. Put a little bit of ice pack there on it for her. And well, again, it'll take more than that to put her out of an All Ireland semi final. Clint's now to take this one. There are the 265s ahead of her, so she's probably about 70 yards down from her own goal. She plays that down into the or her attacking goal, I should say. She plays that down into the corner, but there's too much on it. And Westmead turn it over, but the pass isn't hugely accurate. Huge effort there. Absolutely massive effort there from the team captain, Ellen Burke, to make sure that one didn't go further forward. I think it came off her upper tie and went out for a line ball. I think she's going to feel that. She's holding her upper tie there as we speak, trying to stretch it out. It's going to be a line ball now to Westmead. McCrossan puts that one down again maybe neither team just getting possession of that cleanly at the start again the weather conditions are definitely having some impact on this game now Eve Minogue has it Eve Minogue goes past two players still Minogue still Minogue up to the D on her right hand side she has only eyes for goal that's exactly what she's going to do shorten up the grip in the hurdy was accurate was skillful and gets her score number two for the Dunderry player and again, like Sheila McGrath on the other side, when Eve Minogue picks it up and runs at the heart of that defence, she is causing problems. 
It's dropping down into the aforementioned Sheila McGrath. Sheila McGrath this time wants to turn provider, I think. I think she either overhit the pass or underhit the shot, but it's going to be picked up there by Tara Murphy. Tara has it now. She takes a big tackle. The referee says, oh, it's a free in. Tara Murphy, the judge for charging. She's going to get back into the goals pretty quickly because Westmead might take advantage of that. But I don't think that's going to happen on this occasion. There is going to be a chance for Westmead. And more than likely, Megan Dowdle is going to come and take this one. But that's a bit of a present there. Tara Murphy just ran into the attacker there. Referee says that's charging, so it's going to be a free in. So coming up on about five and a half minutes left, a chance for Westmead to go into the lead. Megan won the Ashbourne Cup this year and she goes with that one on her left hand side and that again just very very easy nice nonchalant stroke she wasn't under any pressure at all as she struck that one over she won that Ashburn Cup with TUD and actually got a goal in the final so used to playing and winning all her in finals and wants to do that again with her county so Tara Murphy now goes with this one she finds her player with a brilliant catch there by Donnelly in fact, it wasn't Donnelly, it was Coleman. Coleman was really good there. She was out, got her hand on that and starts this attack for Mead as they play it down the line towards O'Halloran. O'Halloran now thought about maybe giving that in, eventually did give it in. Now it's danger, danger here. Chance for Mead. Oh, it's still there. Can it be whipped onto the net? Mead trying to get this one up. It's wants to work its way all the way back there to McLaughlin. Two West Mead players there's collided, I think. They're both down, they're both feeling that one. But once they do recover for this, they'll be happy that the ball didn't go into the net or over the bar. just looks like they just ran into each other just eyes on the ball that's all it was and hopefully they'll be able to run this one off four and a half minutes left till half time six points to five in favour of Westmead Westmead 100% record coming into today's game in the championship they beat Kerry or they drew with Kerry I should say 111 to 28 they beat Leash 217 to 110 that's a 10 point win and then of course they beat Mead 411 to 27 that was an absolute goal fest a little bit different here today plenty of time though so who knows what could happen but 6 goals when they met the last time Westmead were maybe expected to be a little bit rusty coming into today's game having not played an all-earned quarter final and it was a little over a month since their last game Mead, as we mentioned, only played a couple of weeks ago against Cork here in Semple Stadium. So are used to it and maybe slightly surprised people by winning that match. But they're here today and they're showing full value for it. Just a point behind their near neighbours, Westmead. I think we have one of the two players are up. So we're 50% there. Now they're And just to keep you updated on that senior semi-final, Tipperary 1-7, Waterford 1-4, with 22 minutes gone in that one. I think we may be nearly ready to go here in FPD Semple Stadium again, just going through the last bits of protocol. We've all got our helmets on and we're ready to go again. And we're going to get going again with whatever the referee decides here. Is he going to Looks like it's going to be a throw ball just there on the 21. So we've got two and a half minutes left, but we were stopped there for maybe two or three minutes, so we'd expect at least that to be added on at the end of this first half. The ball is dropped there. Who's going to pick it up? The Westmead have it, trying to burrow out there. They win themselves a free. And it will be well worth the pain. Those defenders will feel in the morning for running into each other. They're stopping the goal, though, and now they get a free out, and they look up and say, six points to five, we're winning. We'll take that. A few runs have been made down inside. The Scully is trying to get the ball down towards. She gets it as far as McGrath. McGrath again has been well marshaled there by Tracy King, which managed to feed it forward in there as far as McCrossan. McCrossan has it now. Dances past the player. McCrossan on her left. She goes for the shot, trying to get another score for Westmead. And that's exactly what she does. Really good work there. This time McGrath, turn provider, gave it into McCrossan. McCrossan did the rest. And so they lead by two. To me, defence now getting a bit vocal. I think we're hearing Tara Murphy trying to scream out some instructions. One up is the call, and one does go up. One from each team, and it drops. And Westmead seem to have managed to pick up the scraps as they get onto that there. Trum across, and that half blocked, and it goes back outside as O'Malley. O'Malley now has it. O'Malley trying to go past two players. She gives that across as far as McCrossin again, who scored a point a couple of minutes ago. And it's worked its way up there as far as 
Doherty. Doherty has it now as well. She plays it on again as the rain starts getting a little bit heavier and the clouds start to get a little bit greyer and it's turning into real nearly winter hurling at this stage. It's over there in the far side of the field again. What is it? Three, four, five players involved in this one. Is it going to manage to work its way out? It has. And from a mead perspective, they have the ball and they're going again and it's knocked inside. The ball drops. Is there going to be a chance? There isn't because the West Mead defence is strong. It's back there and Julie McLaughlin does well. But as I say that, the ball squirts out of her hand and it's still there. It's around the 21. Two mead players there on top of it. One of them is Donnelly. Donnelly is trying to get it. Trying to play it outside, trying to get a bit of space. Now she has it. Oh, two fine whips there. Come in again, old style. Play it out the field, but it's worked its way out as far as Minogue. Minogue with her back to goal as she struck that. But it doesn't matter what obstacles in her way. Because Eve Minogue can get over all of them. And Eve Minogue gets number three for Mead. And we're back to a one-point game again with 30 seconds of normal time left. And we're going to have another stoppage. There's a Mead player down now who needs a bit of attention. So this all adds up to what will be added on at the end of this first half. A real nip and tuck affair here. And who's to say we won't have extra time in this one? This game has to be decided. Three minutes to be added on at the end of this. And I, when the PA system here says at least three minutes, I'd say we will pay every second of them. As since the referee would have given that call in, we've had another stoppage. So we would expect probably four minutes realistically. But we're up and going again, and that's all that matters. The Mead player puts her helmet back on, and we're going to get started. That Mead player was Abby Donnelly, and Abby is up, and she's okay, and she's playing on, and the ball is pucked out again, dropping, dropping there in favour of O'Malley. Eve O'Malley picks it up, tries to go past two players in the side. No, I cut inside and give a pass inside. She gives it in as far as McCrossin. McCrossin plays that back outside, and now Westmead are on the march again, playing inside. That ball has a nice bit of zip on it. They're trying to hit it in as far as Kelly. Kelly doesn't get it. It looks like it's going to be read back there by the Mead defence, but it's still there. It's going to come back out to Kelly again. The ball is just slipping and sliding all over the place as the turf gets a little bit wetter and slippier. It's back there again. And Mead managed to clear that out there. It looked like it was coffee who managed to clear that out, but she hit it straight out over the line. It's going to be a line ball just shy of the 21. Now we score. We saw one score from here down in Nolan Park. Wickford against Kilkenny in the senior grade in the opening round of this Camogie Championship. Two points you get for scoring a line ball directly off the ground, of course, in Camogie. Is it, it's a real game changer of a score if you do get it. I don't think we might see that here, but who knows as the West Mead player just gets in position of that. There's a couple of players running around short. That is going to be McCross and McCross and puts that one in again. There's a nice bit of zip on it. It's going to drop. It's going to drop favourably from a West Mead point of view potentially. It's still there. The referee is trying to decide what to do. He's a whistle in his mouth. At the moment he's letting him play on. At the moment it's going to be a Mead player is going to come out with this. Oh, but the stick goes in. It's still there. Coleman, then Coleman seems to just shove her way out of that one, get herself a bit of space and play it up the line up as far as Donnelly. But Donnelly doesn't manage to control that. It's gone out of play. That's going to be a line ball. A line ball to Mead as it was a final stick came in there from a West Mead player. And it's going to be a line ball. We've got a minute and ten seconds or thereabouts we've been told to be played in this first half. Six points to seven. Oh, the line ball is missed initially, which means she can't touch it again until another player comes in, and that's what she was waiting for, and a little bit of a ruck will form here, and I imagine the ball will go out of play again, and that's exactly what happens, and it's going to be another line ball on the far side of the field, again to me, so basically a take two. So Coleman goes again. She goes up the line. It's not a huge distance, but she finds a player in the green jersey and maybe can build from this. Good hand pass, two or three intricate passes there. And another chance is Mano coming forward over the 45. Takes that into her hand. She is fouled. Referees says play on. Still Mano, still Mano, up to the 14. Mano with the shot. Oh, it's well saved. It's still there now. But we're going to come back. In fairness to the referee, he had his hand up. Let Mano go on. Mano took a shot. It was brilliantly saved by Fiona Keating. And now we're going to come back for the free in. But Minogue really has a pair of pedals on her. She Once she gets going, she flies. The shot was well saved by Fiona Keating. But as I said, the referee did have his hand up. Colin McAllister, good officiating there. Had the hand up. Didn't get the advantage, so we come back for a free. It's going to be Grace Coleman to take this. Mead yet to score from a free in this game, interestingly enough, considering we played 33 minutes. She goes with that one. Didn't look unbelievably comfortable. Yeah, you could see there. She didn't catch that. Maybe the weather conditions and everything else affected her. It goes to the left and wide. And that is all we're going to see here today. Well, in the first half, anyway, stay with us. Jeez. 
we will have the full second half coming in a couple of minutes time but I thought all we're going to see in the first half Westmead 7 points Mead 6 points we're going to take a quick pause and we'll come back with full coverage of the second half very shortly
Welcome back to FBD Semple Stadium. My name is Paul Jenkins and you're tuning in for the second half of the second intermediate semi-final. Half-time score, Westmead 7, Mead 6, and there's been one change on the teams there. We just see them come out there, Westmead 17, we think. We'll just have to keep an eye out for the numbers. The numbers went up, it wasn't confirmed for which team. Um, we're thinking it's Westmead, though, so we'll just keep an eye out for a number 17. Either way, we're going to have to get going here as the rain is starting really to get heavy now, starting to team down here in the Sample Stadium. Carl McAllister today is match referee, just making sure his watch is we're up and ready to go and we're in and we're ready to go we're ready to play on and it actually looks like it's going to be 17 for Mead I think because I see the West Mead number 12 and it was going to be 17 for 12 so 17 for Mead is onto the field by the best of my recognition and that's Avine Ladley Lally is onto the field but the ball has still just been fought for two nails not ideal conditions for Camogie at the moment the rain is really teeming down on top of them but it's, now the ball has been worked in and there might be a chance of a score from a Mead perspective to work around the edge of the D to mess Mead players in they're just throwing their body into this one to stop Mead making any further in rows and Mead have picked this one up they've laid it outside there through Donnelly Donnelly fed that one back outside and Mead losing ground but holding on to the ball Again, there's the number 17 we mentioned, Lally, who's just come onto the field. That ball wasn't accurate, though. It's knocked over as far as Core. Core plays that one in, and Westmead now have the numbers over. One-on-one, -on -one. that one is dropping dangerously. It's one-on-one. -on -one. The keeper has to come out. The keeper does come out. Really well done there by Tara Murphy. She had to be quick off her line to stop that going any further, and that's exactly what she was. She came out, gobbled up the ball, and played it up through a line. Now it's picked up there by Eve Minogue. Eve has been brilliant in that first half. Scored three points. She has the ball in the stick. She's heading for the 45. Still Minogue. Minogue takes it into her hand, takes it confidently takes her shot but it just goes to the left and wide and I think that might be the first time we've seen her take the ball on like that and shoot wide every other occasion that first half she managed to convert it into a score but it doesn't work out for her this occasion and maybe the rain has something to do with that as it is coming down here in sheets at the moment and just not making it easy for the players that one is nicely dropped outside over there towards Denise McGrath Denise trying to fight for that one Denise pulls pulls again but it's Mead who have the ball and working there through tight corners across the field as far as Coleman now. Coleman picks it up. Coleman looks down into the corner. There's three or four players fighting for this one, but it's going to be a Mead player who's going to pick that up. That Mead player is Donnelly. Donnelly comes back inside, trying to play a good ball inside. Does the ball have the legs in it? It's still there. It's going to be picked up. Mead are in chance for a goal here. Can they manage to work something from here? They can't just get it up at the moment. It's still there again with Mead players throwing in their boots, throwing in everything, and the ball just seems to be stuck in the ground at the moment. Who's it going to come out for? It's still there. It's still been fought for again. Colin Alistair, the match referee, is going to have to just wait and see what happens or is he going to throw in the ball? It's dangerously close to the square for him to be throwing in the ball so he really wants to let it go on as much as he can and Mead have managed to roll, lift this one out nearly tackling each other there and that one but Mead have the ball trying to get into a bit of space Donnelly trying to pull the trigger oh the referee, what has he said? There's a chop down there maybe Mead had the advantage but it doesn't matter it's going to come back now and they have a free in from the 21 just in front of the goals and this one is very scorable and it'll get them up and going now for this second half. Six points to seven was the halftime score, and six points to seven is how we remain. Two and a half minutes or so in. But you'd imagine that would all change now with this Mead free just outside the 21. Towel's been brought on, as you'd expect. Not an easy day to play in Camogie when it starts to come down like this, especially for the free takers. They do need that hurley to be dry to make a proper connection. So a chance here, just the middle of the D. You'd expect this to be fairly easily converted. And that's exactly what happens. And Mead just bring this game to all square again at seven points apiece. And fairly easy score there for Emma Minogue. Keating with the puck out. Dropping, dropping, still dropping, still not picked up by either team cleanly and it's still there and Westmead haven't given up the fight in this one. They've managed to turn this one over and go forward. There's Denise McGrath. Denise didn't get a huge connection on that but plays it inside and Westmead still have the ball. They're working hard. Dowdle has it now. Dowdle going away from goals but still trying to get the shot in. Big block coming in there which sends the ball skywards. Gary Owen's side is going to bounce around us back in the hands of a Westmead player. Back outside as far as McGrath who started this move. She puts that one forward but Mead just had the numbers back there and it's up as far as Emma Minogue. Emma who scored a free just a couple of seconds ago. Has three from the first half all from play puts that one in it's bouncing dangerously in as far as Abby Donnelly for Mead if she can get on it but it looked like McLaughlin is back there for West Mead the full back and she does enough to clear that she has been solid all day long so far 
And she cleared another one there with Mead. Are back in position and back on the attack. Kira Foley for Mead trying to get onto that one. Is she going to win the race? She does enough to just throw her stick at that and move it forward on there. As far as Amy Gaffney, Amy Gaffney's shot is slightly short and it's right into the hands there of Fiona Keating. Fiona plays that one back up the line or into the hands there of Tara Murphy. I should say Tara Murphy did fairly well with that one. And Mead come away again. And it's going to go back down inside. And it's going to just have too much legs. And I can imagine it's going to be left outside. And it's going to be a line ball. Or a goal. It's going to be a chance for the goalkeeper to take this puck out. Fiona Keating in the goals there. All Ireland under seven. All Ireland junior winner in 17. And All Ireland intermediate winner in 19. Bags of experience there with Fiona Keating. And Westmead are thankful to have her between the sticks as she drops that one there it's bouncing again it's going to bounce into the paw of a mead player it's not it's picked up there again by Gaff McGrath McGrath going across the field just can't hold it it's still there though pulled Minogue is in on top of that for mead stops that going forward and gets her team up and running but again over there by Smead. good strong work there by McLaughlin McLaughlin who's come out slightly from her full back position and just gets things going again the ball can now to play over in the first side of the field Sheila McGrath was working hard for West Mead and does enough to win her side a line ball just outside the 265s looking up there's a few runners she tries to hit one of them tries to play it inside just not working out and coming together there a couple of players and it's going to be a free in a free in for Westmead just there between the 21 and the 45 over by the far side line and a chance for Westmead to go back into the lead players are shouting bring on a towel to the free taker on the far side of the field free taker Megan Dowdle of course the giant captain this isn't going to be an easy one. She's right by the side and the rain is going into her face. Everything is against her really, but she's going to go for it. Here we go. Throws it up. Strikes. Difficult angle. Has she managed to convert? She hasn't. That's gone out to the left and wide. And the score remains seven points apiece. Coming up on 37 minutes gone. So we're into the second half. We've played nearly seven minutes of that second half. That one goes as far as Tracy King. King goes back outside. Mead trying to work it maybe in dangerous positions but it's working for him at this stage then that one is just dropped high is it going to drop over the 45 it's not it's going to be batted half half missed but then pulled on in the air by Foley Kira Foley tried to help that on West Mead have enough numbers back there to stop that going any further forward but West Mead have managed to gather possession on the clearance still there they're still fighting McCross and put in the hurry there and it's gone out for a line ball now a line ball for Mead they're dead centre of the field between the 265s and a chance for Grace Coleman now to take this line ball. Grace, a soaring star nominee last year. Gets on this one and puts it high into a bit of space, but there's no girl down there in a green and yellow jersey initially anyway. Amy Gaffney doing her best to get in. Top of that, does really well. Puts in the block, stops the clearance. She did concede the line ball, but they don't lose any ground with that one. It's going to be a line ball now that's going to be taken by Mwern Scally. She's back in between her own 14 and 21. Here goes Mwern thinking about where to go with this one everything is very narrow everything is close to her maybe she'll try to spread it or will she just go relatively short she goes over the, 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 the wall that was in front of her but it wasn't an accurate one but Westmead have worked it out eventually now there's a chance to go with it now there's a chance for Denise McGrath she plays that up the line she plays it in as far as Dowdle Dowdle has it now past the player still going strong up to the 45 she's trying to pull the trigger I think a stick came in there just she was about to pull and it goes out to the left not a huge amount of power on it and Mead have a chance to smother things up back there and get the ball and play it out of their own defence through the hands almost football style as that one's worked up as far as King now King is looking down inside there is space there is two Mead players there's only one West Mead player advancing at the moment and it looks like Mead have done enough to win that one through Donnelly Donnelly then puts that back outside and a shot dangerous one oh nice touch there a really important touch there from Fiona Keating that one was dropping in around the square it was inviting a touch to finish into the net the touch never came and we're going to go back for a 45 the Grace Coleman is going to take it looks like but there was danger there Fiona Keating not for the first time in this game has saved her sight she had to be alert she had to be agile as that one was dropping dangerously in around the small parallelogram just needed a touch the touch didn't come as I said and it was Keating who put it out for the 45 and now Coleman is going to take this one yet to score in today's game hoping to rectify that now as we approach the 10 minute mark in the second half throws it up for herself looks to be pretty central it looks to be accurate the umpire's going to the white flag it's over the bar 
Grace Coleman, number one for the day for her. And Mead now go one point to the good. Fiona Keating now with the puck out again. This time she goes to her right hand side. Is this one going to go straight out of play? Yes, it is. It's too much on that. Maybe a mix up in communication, but it's made its way out over the line. It's going to be a line ball now to Mead on the far side of the field. Let down the line. There's two West Mead players. One of them is going to be Scally. Scally doesn't get it though. It seemed to be a bit of a tackle coming in there, maybe over the top. McKay back there has it. Emily McCabe tries to dance her way out of that and manages to succeed, gives it back inside. Three West Mead players there came really well together, formed a little triangle and got out of danger. Cleared down the field now that M. Minogue is involved in that one as well. Or Eve Minogue, I should say. M. Minogue was playing in the last game for Kilkenny. The Minogues are having a great game though in the Camogie so far today. Here comes Eve Minogue. Eve on the ball again, plays that directly off the stick. Doesn't get the purchase she would have liked. It drops around the 45. And West Mead again come out with that one really well done there by Doherty. Doherty plays it now. A nice pull in the air. and But it goes away from her and Westmead have a chance there through Kelly Kelly tried to get onto that just feeding it forward again Westmead are under the thumb the last couple of minutes are trying to get it out under the cash trying to work their way back into this game but Mead not letting them do that very easily at the moment now Mead have another chance again nice little bit of stick work there and it's Gaffney who has it Gaffney goes one way then the other makes a bit of space for herself here goes Gaffney she shoots and she scores so her split second I think she was thinking goal but Gaffney showed real pace and real ingenuity to work that angle for herself went forward and struck it over the cross for number two for her for the day and seven points to nine now is the score in favour of the Royal County nice take there by Dowdle Dowdle has it but she's brought to ground and it's going to be a free and she's probably going to step up and take this herself Megan Dowdle she was trying to bring her side back into this after conceding the last two scores she can still do that but the free is going to be a difficult one on the far side of the field a member of the Westmead backroom team comes across with the towel to try and dry things up. She didn't use it the last time and it didn't go so well for her, so we'll see what difference it makes. This is a farther out set play, but the angle as a result is slightly easier, but then you have to bring into account the distance. So can Megan, she's got three already today, can she get number four? That one looks to be going possibly to the right and wide yes that's where it does end up going that's gone to the right and wide not an easy one especially under these conditions but the score remains Mead 9 points West Mead 7 points 12 minutes into the second half Tara Murphy Tara Murphy under that is Tracy Tracy King has it King comes out she thought about going along with that but then saw Aoife Minogue was all in a row and gave it to Aoife now Aoife's looking up Aoife's thinking of a score is she? It's going to drop short, though, but it will cause damage or danger inside there at very least. It's still there. It's still there to be won. Westmead are there to win it, though. Julie McLaughlin has it. Roll lifts that one up. It doesn't manage to get it hugely clear. Only out there as far as Donnelly. Donnelly, she was heading away from goal on the back foot. But that is an exquisite score from the Kilmessen player. It looked like Julie McLaughlin had done everything right at the back. But the ball somehow made its way as far as Abby Donnelly. And as I said, heading away from goals on the back foot manages to convert. We'll probably have a bit of a pause here as there's a Westmead player down with cramp, I think, or maybe it's a little bit more than that, but the play has been stopped as a result. She will be okay to get up and play on, though, we've been told. That player was Denise McGrath, Denise is okay. That one is going to drop over there to her sister, Sheila. Now Sheila's trying to get it up. Oh, Sheila just couldn't manage to get that to stick in her hand, and Mead have turned it over again. And they're coming. Heads up hurling being played here as that one has dropped into a dangerous zone. Trying to get in as far as Emma O'Connell. Emma, is she going to get to it? Oh, good bit of stick play there by McCabe inside there. Emma was trying to get onto that. She was going to bear down a goal. And she was already thinking about her celebration, you'd imagine, from what we've seen her in the first half. But Mead have turned it over again, maybe. But again, it's worked out there. Pulled away there by Gaffney. Gaffney gets it five or six yards. It's gone out of play. It's gone out of play and it's going to be a line ball to Mead. And the crowd there on the far side of the field, especially the ones wearing green and gold, are loving that. And it gives them a chance to create something from here. And what will Mead do here? They only have about three players in an advanced position. And number 22 has come on for Mead there. I think Sheila McGrath has made her way off the field, potentially, or Denise McGrath, one of the McGraths who was receiving the attention a minute ago. But either way, number 22 has now come onto the field. 
It's Anya Newman as the play continues. Mead have worked it back as far as Minogue. Minogue with the shot. That's gone to the right and wide. So Anya Newman, to the best of our knowledge, has come into the field there at 22. And she is hoping to make a contribution as Westmead come on the attack for the first time in a while. But they managed to work it up to McCrossin. McCrossin now goes past a couple of players. Good ball inside to the Newman, who's just into the game. She helps things keep going. And Westmead are going forward again through Sheila McGrath. Here goes Sheila up to the 21. Sheila has the board inside there from Core. Core has it now. She's going away. Three Mead players on top of her. Have they done enough? It looks like they have it. Still there. It's half full. It's not clear. It's back to McGrath again. McGrath goes back outside. Westmead need to get a score from this. Oh, but it's dropped short and right into the hands of Tara Murphy. The eventual shot came in from Dowdle. It just didn't have enough power on it. And it was easy for Murphy in the end because that was a real chance and it was something Mead needed. They feel they've been out of the game the last few minutes. But they're not going to get back into it just yet. And now we've a line ball on the far side of the field. Halfway through this second half. The ball comes in there with a bit of zip on it, but Mead have enough players back there and they're able to run this one out of their own defence. Nearly ran straight out of play. A hand pass thrown up there more in desperation, I think, than any way by design. And it's going to be another line ball. We've seen plenty of these here today. And now we have another one for Mead. Or actually West Mead, it looks like. Yeah, it's going to be a West Mead line ball on the far side of the field. Megan Dowd are going to take this one. Puts that across and doesn't go a huge distance and Mead have turned over the ball again it looks like that's Minogue again that distinctive running style she has she lost the ball but it worked out because the two West Mead players ran on gave her a chance to clear it on then again in as far as O'Connell O'Connell is out front she was being held the referees had play on though O'Connell has it now spins past her player now O'Connell going forward got the opening point in this game good hook there she ended up missing the ball twice as a result some brilliant defending from West Mead the ball is now on the ground and Colin McAllister has said what has he said is he going to throw it in is he going to give it free he hasn't actually made a ruling on it just yet it was Aoife O'Malley, I think, with a great piece of play there. Great piece of defending on M. O'Connell. Could have been Aoife Doherty as well, but either way, brilliant defending from a Westmead point of view as M. O'Connell was trying to get her second point of the day. Three points the lead for the Royals and in the senior game it's all square between Tipperary and Waterford they're about halfway through their second half as well it's 1-9 to 1-9 there as well it's Westmead now come on the attack through McCross and McCross and plays that down the line not the easiest one but Sheila McGrath did really well to get a stick in there and turn it over knock it down to Dowdle Dowdle has it now she's flying towards the goal she's up to the 21 still Dowdle no real support with her she'll have to take this on her own still Dowdle tries to go past does a little pirouette back outside to McGrath the shot oh well saved in fact that was as far as core but either way the shot was saved and went me to pick up the scrap still on the ball this time it's McGrath and this time it's a score and it's no more than Westmead deserved they've had a couple of chances they've come away with nothing but this time it goes back to their Talis player Sheila McGrath and she gets her fourth of the day and we're down to just two points and the Westmead look like they're making a change there number 23 is about to come into the fray that's Shannon Dalton we have to see who she's replacing the official board is coming up there yeah and it looks like Maria Kelly is, Marie Kelly is going to come off the field there Shannon Dalton is in her place so Tara Murphy is going to start things again the Mead goalkeeper she has 11 county titles to her name believe it or not huge puck out there for Murphy right into the hands of Minogue who rose like a salmon there, picked up the ball, going for on the left, trying to play this inside, maybe didn't get the connection she would have liked on that one, but they're still there, the ball isn't won cleanly, it's still there, it's going to squirt back outside, and Mead holding on to this one, back as far as O'Connell again, O'Connell, she wanted to score a couple of minutes ago, she didn't get it, can she get it now? Can she? Can she? Yes, she can. We should have known from her reaction, she's a real enthusiastic player, when she got the one in the first half, she gave a fist bump when she got the one there, she jumped for joy, number two for Emma O'Connell, Emma, who has a fine background in athletics as well as Kamogi. And you could see it there, the bit of speed she had as she left her marker. And she struck that over the crossbar. 11-8 now in favour of her side. West Westmead in possession there. A bit of a clash there. And that bit of charge in the referee says, and that is going to be a free for Westmead there between the 265s. I think they're taking the chance to have a brief discussion about how things are going. 
Laura Doherty definitely getting some instructions there from a member of the Westmead backroom team that one is quickly enough taken left inside oh they were looking to try and play it in as far as Aoife O'Malley but it just went over her hurley she's still fighting for it though oh and there was a Aoife O'Malley there gets the rub of the green Tracy King and Judge have chopped her I think was the call and now a chance for Aoife O'Malley again she could fancy it from here we have a lovely view of this it's, we're right behind it is there going to be a chance for Aoife O'Malley also involved the Westmead ladies footballers of course they were knocked out by Claire earlier in the intermediate a couple of weeks back she goes with that it goes to the right it's going to bounce and it's going to go harmlessly wide and Westmead you feel do need to be converting all the chances they get 10 minutes left in this one 11 points to Mead 8 points to Westmead so Tara Murphy again Again, drop and bounce, pounce down by McGrath. McGrath feeds that forward for herself, gives her something to run onto. Now she has it. She's over the 21. Still McGrath. Still McGrath has the board inside. A few players call for her. McGrath ignores them. McGrath shoots and McGrath scores. She doesn't need any support. She won that ball herself. She took it down herself. She ran through and she converted it herself. Really good play from McGrath. Dragging her side, kicking and screaming back into this game. Two points is all that's in it now. Murphy again with the ball for Mead. This one is going to drop again centrally enough. Whose hand go on to it? It's the other half forward this time. It's core, but she's lost it to Minogue. Minogue then thought about through a dummy, an outrageous dummy that works out for her. Still Minogue has the board inside the handpass, wasn't as clean as she would have liked. Went about five or six yards, it's still there. The referee again is thinking, what's he going to do here? I think the ball was played on the ground or covering the ball or either way it's going to be a free out and a chance for Westmead and they're going to steal a few yards with that one Scally trying to come up the field the referee Colin McAllister saying no go back you need to go back from where the foul was committed the linesman there on the far side of the field making sure the same thing somewhere in Scally now has it two points the margin And where is that one going to drop? It's going to drop between the 45 and the 65. Who's going to drop to Westmead? Look like they have it. But then Mead don't want to give up on that. And it's come back outside there as far as Gaffney. Gaffney hadn't got a chance to run for a few minutes. Now takes her chance. Now goes across the field with the ball. But she's looking up to try and play that inside. It's a slippery enough one. It's slipping all the way inside. It's slipping all the way inside as far as the 14. Julie McLaughlin is in there for Westmead. They're full back. Can she get it out? Mead are kicking it. It's kicked towards goal. But it goes to the right and wide. Abby Donnelly, not one of the players involved with Mead, who's involved with the ladies football team as well. But maybe she get called in after that. She had a fair kick at that one, but it just went to the right and wide. Pulled back down there. Coleman seems to have injured herself in that exchange with McCrossan. Goes back down, batted down. Mead, again, just playing this through the lines in these conditions, probably the right thing to do. King puts that down and just like I say that goes straight down to a Westmead player all on her own and she's able to get things going she's able to play it up to Sheila McGrath now Sheila has it Sheila goes outside her player still Sheila going forward Sheila's looking up at the score oh Minogue Minogue put her hurley and put her body put everything on the line there and stopped that one because Sheila McGrath was almost going off celebrating as that left her hurley Minogue was making sure that didn't happen now it's back with Minogue again Minogue steadied herself put everything she had into that one but it's going to probably drop short oh it's not it's dropped in the side first Donnelly Donnelly is onto it Donnelly bearing down the goal Donnelly with the shot oh it's gone to the right and wide oh the goal was gaping it was at her mercy her shot came in it was probably slightly over the crossbar anyway but eventually it goes to the right and wide and there is no score at the end of that move still 11-9 Six and a half minutes left in normal time. The game has come to life in the last few minutes. There's been plenty of chances at both sides. And who knows which way this one is going to go. Evine Lally is over on the far side of the field, attending to one of her teammates. I think it might be Emma Minogue. It's the yellow helmet of her. She's over there. I don't see her anywhere else on the field. She's putting a savage work rate and effort in today's game. She's also scored four points. So she might just need to breathe her as much as that now as we hope that's all it is. Just to give you an update on the senior Camogie, it's Waterford 111, Tipperary 19. A few people might be surprised by that. They have about eight minutes left as well. Waterford have come behind from behind in that game. Derry, of course, winning the first semi final here. Beating Kilkenny after extra time. 
No doubt. They're sitting pretty. I hope you're having your... Probably watching in, girls. Congratulations on your win again. Sitting down having your post-match meal, I imagine, watching this one. Now Westmead come again. Not the biggest or the best players in the world, but it's worked its way back out first. Coleman. Now Coleman. Two players fighting her off. She managed to hold them off and kick it forward. She's still held. There's still a bit of a row going on between the players there. But Mead are on the ball. Oh, Donnelly. She was thinking about the next move. And now she's working out. It's actually Gaffney. Gaffney has it. Gaffney with the right. Brilliant block there by Scally. Gaffney still has it though. Gaffney trying to go one with the other. She's gone to ground. Plays it back outside. As far as Foley. The shot is a little bit weak. But they're hard to deal with these days. And it goes all the way as far as Keating. And again, like she has been all day. She's been solid. She was behind that. Wasn't anyway nervous as the ball was trickling in towards her. Even if some of the fans were. Clears it out the field. And listen to this. They're in a huge crowd here, but they're really letting themselves feel known here. There's probably five or six hundred here, but the way they're screaming, you'd swear Semble Stadium was full. And West Mead have managed to win themselves a free here. Mead again warming up a player down there in front of us. It looks like Mead number 18, Aoife Carey, is going to be coming on in the next few minutes. Well, we have only, what, seven and a half to play. In fact, that's a 55. We've only four and a half to play. This one has to be decided on the day, though. So we could have extra time and 45s. That one again left in long by the goalie. Left in long by Keating. It's going to drop. Drop to Mead. Mead just have the numbers there. Lally has picked it up now. Lally heading towards the sideline. She's looking for some support. She was looking for Minogue I think. But she was half blocked. Minogue was getting in around this again. The ball is staying in play just about. Minogue sticks in her hurley. And just like a magician managed to pick that one out. Feed it out. And away she goes. Gives it across as far as Foley. Now Foley yet to score today. That one is dropping in. Oh it just wasn't handled the first time cleanly. It's still there. Two Westmead players come around that one, but the ball has come out. It's come out, come out Westmead player though. And Westmead have that coming out of a bit of traffic there was Eva Doherty. Doherty played it on, played it back as far as Gaffney. Karen Gaffney played that over the top. And Westmead lived to fight another day and it's cleared away again. And that is heading out for a line ball. As the clock keeps ticking on and ticking on, Mead will be the happier side. Only two points up, a dangerous lead, as we say so often. And it's Eva Carey who's come onto the field. And off comes Grace Coleman. For the remaining three and a half minutes or so. Hadn't been a huge amount of stoppages in the second half. But there'll still be probably three odd minutes added on. In this Leinster derby. Not a brilliant connection. And Westmead have turned that over. Heading back. And it's going to be a free, a free to Westmead. A free to Westmead and the ball is hit back. Will we be moving on for as a result of that? The referee, not sure if he spotted it, but it's going to be a free to Westmead. And they're two points down. They need to get something from this one. We're into the last two and a half minutes or so. They need a score from here, they'll feel. That's exactly what they're trying to do. That one is knocked in around the edge of the square. Who's it going to drop to? It's batted straight back out of where it came from. Westmead have picked up the scraps. Minogue is there trying to stop this one going over. Is it going to be enough? Have Westmead managed to convert? Yes, they have. We're down to a one-point game. Fantastic effort there. I think it was McCrossin who got it to number nine for Westmead. Struck that one over the bar. One point now with what? One minute and 20 seconds or two minutes and 20 seconds on left. Dropping, dropping, pulled, tap down there, tap down by McCrossin. In fact, it was McCrossin who got that last point. Either way, Westmead get the point. That's all that matter. We'll confirm who got her in a couple of seconds' time. As Ms. Crossan now picks up the ball. She goes down. Was she fouled? The referee says no. Play on. Big tackle coming in there again. Missed. As Ms. Me- as Mead come on the attack. It was in fact Eva O'Malley, I believe, who got that point potentially. But now, now Mead have it. O'Connell. O'Connell trying to finish this game. She's half hooked. Not for the first time in this game. She was hooked there as she tried to pull the trigger. So no... Score comes out of it. And it's Westmead who have now managed to turn it over. It's Doherty. Doherty plays that up the line. Doherty tried to get that back there. She was just out muscled out of it. And now it's Minogue who has it. It's Eve Minogue. Eve Minogue sends that one high. High in around the penalty spot. It's dropping. Can it be flicked? Again, Fiona Keating was behind that. Fiona stood tall and cleared it out. Still just the narrowest of margin in this one. One point is turned over there in the far side of the field. Lally. Lally was blocked. Lally still might have a chance if it comes up for her, but Westmead don't want to give up at in here easy. They have it again, driving out of the 45. Westmead in possession of the ball, the most important thing to have at this stage. 
It was Core who came up the field there, didn't manage to clear it, didn't manage to clear it to a West Mead player. And Mead have it again. Mead have it going forward. One point is all we have in this game. Mead are up at this stage. They want to hold on to the ball and it's just like say that, they lose it. It's turned over and West Mead have it. Playing down into the corner. Oh, it doesn't go that far. It's well cut out there by Tracy King. Me still have it though. They're a point up and they have the ball. That one is knocked over the top and they've lost the ball. Evo Mali comes and gets that one, scoops it back outside. Westmead holding on to this one. They need to get a score. They need to work it up to their scores. They need to work it up to the likes of McGrath. They haven't done it this occasion. Mead have managed to win the ball back again. It's one back outside. Mead have it now. Mead just need to hold on to possession, they'll feel. With about 15 seconds left in normal time. There'll probably be two or three added on to this. So Mead probably will feel they need another score. But it's West Mead who have it now. They're going forward. They're turned over. And it's hit back down more just to get it away than nothing else. But it might drop favourably. It's going to drop around the 21. Oh, O'Connell was onto that. She's not happy. She feels she was foul. She's looking at the umpires and the referee for assistance. But Mead saved the ball. Shot coming in. Oh! It's buried into the back of the net. What an effort. Absolutely brilliant effort there. It just came outside. There was a gap where the goalie had slightly left a shot for it to be exploited and it was absolutely exploited me do really well and that goal is that going to be the goal that drives me forward and carries them tease him a place in the All-Ireland final it was Eva Gaffney who just saw the opportunity picked it up and rifled it into the left corner of the net there was no chance for Fiona Keating 1-11 now to 1-10 Mead lead is that going to be the insurance score Eva, Gaff- Eva Gaffney with 1-2 for the day but will she score a more important goal than that in her life? Possibly not. If it gets, she won't feel like that now if she gets into the final. There's going to be three minutes added on at the end of this one, we're told. We've played about one of them already. So two more to play. One eleven to ten points. So what's that? Four points in this game. That is maybe insurmountable in some ways, but also it's only two scores. As Babs Keaton from around these parts used to say, that's only two belts of the ball. Four points in this, 111 to 10 points. Far side of the field, Westmead on the attack, we'll say, with their line ball. It's Evo Mali. Evo Mali puts that one in. It doesn't go to another girl in the maroon jersey, unfortunately, from her point of view. And Mead have a chance again. It's going to drop. It's nearly dropping to the goal scorer. Nearly dropped to Gaffney. And Westmead have it. Westmead needs something. They're gone to ground there. Mano came in with a tackle. The referee says a fair one. Still there, still on the ground. It was O'Malley trying to fight for that one. Didn't come up for her, but Westmead have managed to regather possession. Now they've worked it out through Karen Gaffney. Karen Gaffney, the county PRO, going forward. She's fouled the referee, says we're going to come back for a free in. We've played with about 10 seconds left of normal time. The player of the match, there's been a few nominees, but you'd have to be looking at the likes. Well, I suppose, look at Gaffney after scoring the goal a couple of seconds ago, but a standout player for me was Eva Minogue, the number nine for Mead. That's who we will give the Camogie Association YouTube Player of the Match Award too but who knows what's going to happen there might be extra time here as Westmead come on the attack again if they can manage to get a couple of scores but Mead, Mead are in the driving seat Westmead have worked it back to the far side of the field still a chance for a goal here coming in oh deflection and it's gone out it's gone out for a 45 we're not finished here yet we've played about 30 seconds over the allotted 3 minutes that we were supposed to play or sorry we've about 30 seconds left of the 3 minutes we were supposed to play so this is the last chance you'd say well maybe they, if they can get a goal out of this West Mead then we'll feel if we can win the puck out and maybe get a score then but they have to be thinking goal here they have to drop it in around the house what are the chances of getting a second extra time in the second semi-final here in Turles so now every player has to be up for Westmead. They haven't pushed as many players forward as I expected, but this one's going to be dropped in around the house. Dropped in there by Dowdle. It's gone actually out to the right-hand side. Oh, Mead look like they have the numbers there. They're going to win this one. They're going to come out with this one, and that might be that. That is exactly that. Carl McAllister blows the final whistle. One eleven to 10 points. One eleven to 10 points is how it finished. Mead are going to the All-Ireland final. They will play Derry. After another Titanic match we've seen here in Semple Stadium. It is me who come out on top. It was a topsy turvy game, but it's me who are the victors here today. 111 to 10 points. And what drama we've had here in both games. A really good game. 
And as I said a few moments ago, number nine for me, Eve Minogue, is our selection for player of the match. She finished with four points. She was up and down the field all day. She was putting in big tackles. She was stopping advancements from other points of view from the Westmead attack. And she will be our player of the match. The final score here is Mead 1-11, Westmead 10 points. We're hoping to go down and get a word with Eva Minogue and possibly Brendan Skeen at the end of this. So if you bear with us for a couple of seconds, we'll go down and try and grab them for a word. But while we do that, you enjoy the best bits of what was an epic encounter. Final score, Mead 1-11, Westmead 10 points. Joined by the player of the match, Eva Minogue. Eva, what a performance, what a game. Talk to us about it. I, yeah, I don't even know what to say. Westmead, like, we knew we were coming down to a savagely difficult game. I know, obviously, we played them a couple of weeks ago. Roll reversal, they bet us, and they, they bet us by a few, to be fair. Um, so we knew we had, a, we had an uphill battle today, um, but just all rode in together. We said it before, you know, you need a bit of look at the green on the day of any quarter semi final, and, you know, we had it today and, and grateful for it. It's a tough game, and as you said, you know each other very well. How does that change the dynamic of a game? Um, I suppose most intermediate teams, like we'd all know each other fairly well at this stage over the last couple of years. Um, I don't know if it changes it too much. Like you know what you're up against. You know, same players are marking each other and man marked pretty much every game. So uh, it's always going to be fifty-fifty even game. Um, and just yeah, delighted to come out on top of it today. Could could have gone either way. Let's be honest. At, at any point, there's a couple of points in it and. You know, Amy Gaffney got a savage goal there at the end that kind of set it away for us, but uh, could have been the other way around very, very easily and, you know, glad to be on top today. The goal was probably the obvious turning point, but maybe you're already on top at that stage. If it wasn't the goal, what do you think might have been the turning point in the game? Oh, wow. Um, 
I don't know. I think I think you know the certain point was the goal, but. I think there could have been, if it wasn't for that, there could have been many throughout the game. Looking back at it, there's a couple of things, you know, good and bad. You know, we missed a couple of shots. That could have been the turning point for Westmead. They missed a free or two. That could have been the turning point for us. But none of that really mattered once we got the goal. So really, that, that kind of just set it in stone for us, I think, in the end. Yeah, fair point. We'll say it was the goal. Yeah, no. <laughs> all are in final now. You probably saw a lot of the first game, considering it went to the extra time and all. How are you feeling about going into that one now to take on Derry? Yeah, look, ourselves and Derry, I suppose, play each other in league. As, as I said, a lot of intermediate teams know each other fairly well. Uh, played them in quarterfinals last year. So, again, us against Derry, it's always a good battle. Like, each of these seem to be saying that same thing over and over again. But uh, it always is a really good battle. And, you know, we're just glad to still be in it. And we'll spend the next two weeks prepping for take them on. Hope for the best. Brilliant. Eva. thanks very much for talking to us. And best of luck in the All-Ireland Final. That's the end of our coverage here today on an epic day for Camogie here in FBD Semple Stadium. We really hope you enjoyed the coverage and you'll stick with us throughout. Check out our social media for what our upcoming coverage is in the next couple of weeks. Thanks very much and we'll talk to you again very, very soon.